All right, folks. I don't know what happened to the uh, the audio, but hopefully you can hear me. I'm back because I, I at least want to share this uh, website. I told you I want I was going to share with you. So hopefully we can pick up where we left off. I know a lot of y'all are probably watching some NFL football, so but you, you're more than welcome to come back in. See if we can get this uh, live streaming back started. I have to go back to the, uh, the original live to get some of your comments. I want to read some of the comments that you had. Like I said, I have no idea what happened to the audio, but I at least want to share this uh, this uh, this link. So I'm gonna give y'all a couple y'all more time to come uh, come back in. Let me know if you can hear me. Uh, Ace back one would say yeah. I was trying to read your comment uh, last time, Ace Back Woman, but uh, if if you uh, you were saying somebody didn't give you the opportunity, you were 39 or something like that, if you can retype that, let us know what you uh, let us know what you were saying. Maybe I can expound on it a little bit more. I right, three say back. Can you hear me? Can can y'all hear me? Like I said, I don't know what happened to the audio, but I at least want to share this this, this link. If anybody interested in getting to uh, HVAC and looking for an HVAC job, they'll have a good uh, a good website to go to for for a job search.
So you probably can hear me now then. Okay, for cause for some reason this 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 yeah, okay. He said when I when I switched the sound went out. Okay, so you probably can hear me now. All right, man, my, my bad. So basically, so basically, I was saying because the sound dropped out last time. I, I was talking about this also. So basically, when I came to Houston, HVAC would help me learn uh, how to get around. You know what I'm saying? So just like Kendrick was saying, he liked to be stationary. What drew me to HVAC because I can go from building to building. I learned this big city of Houston, like I've been staying here for like 30 years now. You know what I'm saying? I know the South, the West, uh, the highways, the inner streets. Uh, I, I've been all over Houston. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've been here, all, it seems like I've been living here all my life. You know what I'm saying? But I learned that going from building to building. That's why I really fell in love with commercial because I've been at this building here for about two hours, finish up there. I go way across town to another building for a couple hours. Then you might sit me down south for a couple hours, you know what I'm saying? But if you like, if you like to, uh, if if you like to be stationary, if you like to know exactly where you, you know, wh which, where you going that day, you know what I'm saying? HVAC can offer that too. You might want to sign up with a campus or a building or a hospital, a school or something like that, or a school district where you go to that same building, you know exactly where you're going. Um, you, uh, you might not uh, want to be responsible for a company van or anything like that. You can drive your personal vehicle up, up to the school and, you know, use their facilities or their mechanical room or their tool room. Uh, man, there's so many, you know, different possibilities. Uh, like I say, I like the freedom. I love being out. You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't stand going to the same building every day, you know. Um, I like to be out and about, you know what I'm saying? Um I guess really one of the main reasons I ain't like uh, being in the same building because especially like dealing with the facilities or a supervisor or something like that, I really don't want to deal with the same person every day. That's that's another reason what drew, drew me to ownership. You know, I don't, uh, I prefer, you know, to supervise myself. But pretty much every HVAC technician know that you're not going to have no supervisor down your throat all the time. You really have to supervise yourself. You know, you got to know how to be disciplined yourself. But like I can say that that's that's two that's two benefits. If you like to be a stationary, HVAC give you that possibility. If you like to be out and about, you can choose. That's why I say you got to choose what's best for you. You got to choose what's best for your personality. And really, HVAC give you those options. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, if you don't want to bump around, hey, get you a job that you know you could be going to the same job every day. You know say, uh, say she was saying that uh, I was just saying that I was laid off, went to school for HVAC degree, couldn't get hired anywhere, so I started my own licensed and insuring and bond. Sixteen years later, still loving the work, residential and light industrial. That's what's up right there. Sixteen years later, so basically she ain't wait for uh, somebody to get her opportunity. She made an opportunity herself. That's what's up. Let me see. Do you recommend net 30 home warranty? And have you ever not uh have you ever they not paid? My um I, I never not have got paid for for a warranty company. All the warranty companies always pay pay me. Some of them take a long time. That, that just say for I, and I don't really like to give home warranty names, but just, that just say for instance, this home warranty, I don't prefer net 30. Especially when you're starting off, you're going to be kind of wait for that money. But when you get your bank account to a certain uh, standard, you're not really worried about, you know, when you're getting paid. The money is just going to fall sooner or later. So I don't mind getting paid net 30 at all. But some warranty companies be trying to play games to where, let's just say, if they pay you uh, net 30, right, and let's just say on the 29th day, that customer call back and say, uh, and they try to claim it's, it's a recall. It may not have nothing to do with uh, with the service that you did, or it may have something to do with the service that you uh, did. But it could be a call a call back that has nothing to do with what you went out there and repaired. You you could have went out there and replaced a capacitor, build the home warranty company for a capacitor. They got you on net thirty, uh, and the next next time you know the unit not cooling again, and but you go back. Now it's a leak in the evaporator core. So now what that that warranty company try to do is they'll try 
to restart uh, your net 30. They'll, they'll try to call it a recall. That's what I don't like. You know what I'm saying? And, and then you got to go through all these loops and circuits, try to explain all that. That, that, that ain't had nothing to, to do with this work order or whatever. But then, it so it'd be 60 days before you ever get your money on that first call. But then that put you in a mind state. And, oh, man, I ain't trying to work on this next call until y'all pay me for this call, you know. Um, that's the only thing I don't, I don't like about some company net net uh, net 30s. You know what I'm saying, but but most most warranty companies, I, I most warranty companies I deal with, either gonna pay you, you know, within two weeks. But uh, I mean, I see nothing wrong with net 30 though at all. You know what I'm saying, unless you just need the money now. But HBAC man, you know, I say you, you really have to. You're doing something wrong if uh, you know, because if you're a business owner. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be living check to check. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you have to, you know, you have to market and you you have to get your finances in order so where you won't be, you know, worried about one job to pay you. You know what I'm saying? Because I always preach, man, sign up as many warranty companies as possible. You know what I'm saying? And then you kind of find out what what doing uh what what uh what does and does not fit your business model. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you don't like net 30, but if they pay good, if they pay on time, they pay you what you want, you know what I'm saying? You know, I go for it, you know. Um, but I never, I never, um, I don't work with a lot of warranty companies, man. All of them, all of them pay me. I know I heard some horror stories about some warranty companies, but I never not had got paid. Like I say, sometimes it took me a while to get paid, you know, this far as, but as long as you have your ducks in a row and you can prove everything, if they gave you authorization and you got the authorization number, you should be able to be allowed on. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Appreciate it, uh, Jerry, man. That's what it was. I see it now on this on this uh, picture here. Don't have a microphone on here for some reason. Let me see if I can... Uh... I don't know why I don't have a uh, camera on that. So anyway, I just have to keep the uh, two split screens up right now. All right, but I got the uh, link in the comment, man, if anybody want to join in. But like I say, I ain't going to be on here too much uh, more longer. Um, I think we already been on here an hour anyway, at least from the last screen. But I want to at least share. I want to get a couple more people here. I want to at least share. Even if they don't come back on the live screen, I want to at least share the... Um, where you can uh, find these jobs. Yeah. Can you say freedom is gold? And let me see. Do Nick 30 companies pay? I think I answered that. Which company do you recommend? Like I said, man, I don't like to really rec recommend certain companies on live screen. All, all I can tell you because it's different from every region. I can recommend you a company that's doing well for me, but they not might not be doing well for you. You know what I'm saying? Or you could do a company, uh, or you might find a company that you like in your region, or or uh, that they giving you plenty of customers, but they but but they not working out for me. You know what I'm saying? I I have shared companies. Uh, you know, with some of my friend contractors around here, or uh, they're sending them way more customers than they send me. You know what I'm saying? He, he might get about uh, ten calls a week, and I might get one, or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? We could be here in the same area, uh, where they sending me ten calls, but they only send him one call. So you. All I can really recommend, man, is, is just Google every warrant to come for the application for all of them, sign up for every one of them. And then, because uh, all of them not going to call you back, all of them not going to, uh, uh, some of them, let's say, like, uh, like I don't want to throw no names out there, but some of them, you know, they might not be uh, looking for contractors in your region, you know. Um, but like I say, you got to find what's best for you. Don't worry about what somebody say about this one to come because they might, you know what I'm saying, treat them different. Or the contract that you're talking to them might not know how to bill out. They they might not know how to follow directions. You know what I'm saying? They might not be following the guidelines that the warranty companies uh uh, uh specified. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta kind of uh it's a trial and error thing, man, just for a business owner. That's, that's the same thing like some of these lead generations. I can't really rec recommend uh certain lead generate. Uh, generators because uh, um, they might not work for me, to, but they might work for you. You know what I'm saying? You just have to find them and give them a shot. 
I, all I say this for our lead generation, be wary of what you put your money to. I don't think I really tell you just get uh try to rank on Google though. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing. That's the game now. That's the advice I can give you. You know what I'm saying? Word of mouth and, and trying to work on Google. Cause Google like the new word of mouth. So sign up for every warranty company that you can you can get your hands on, you know, and th and just try them out. You know what I'm saying? Especially if because most warranty company they're only doing residential anyway. So you ain't really got uh too much to lose. Uh so let me see some advice I give. So uh hopefully, because well, I can't even say hopefully. So let's say if you're doing some residential, man, you ain't gonna put too much money into it because most warranty companies, if it's a major part, they're gonna want to supply it anyway. And if they don't supply it, you get to add. I like to supply a, a unit if I can, because I know I get more money because you can add like 30, 35 percent uh to it. But let's just say if you just want to try a warranty company out and you're kind of skeptical of uh, if they're going to pay you or not, just because uh, they're going to ask you, do we need to supply the equipment? So just say, yeah. So uh, if they supply the equipment, the only thing you kind of losing is your labor. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to try them out, just say even a co condenser fan motor, you should supply the condenser fan motor, especially uh, if it's going to be a generic kind. You supply this condenser fan motor, you ain't going to be out no more than about $100. You know what I'm saying? And then, bam, you put it in, you mark it up, you put your labor in, you put whatever other cost that you have in, uh, you're going to collect it. If, if they do a deductible, sometimes the warranty companies pay the deductible. Sometimes the customer pay the deductible. You're going to at least get your deductible back. That's probably going to cover that condenser fan motor right there. So now, the only thing, if they don't pay you, like I said, I never had that problem with any warranty company. Some of them pay by credit card right there the next day, as soon as you build out. Some of them do net 7, 14, 10, 30. But uh uh don't don't just don't just uh if you ain't never deal with a warranty company, don't just be uh accepting about 15 work orders from them without you kind of kind of give them a trial because you don't have to just because they give you a work order, don't mean you have to accept it. Start off, you may want to accept one or two and wait to see how they get paid. Make sure you, all your bank account stuff uh, or they're going to mail you a check. Make sure you got everything in order. You know what I'm saying? You you try. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to work for nobody and just do a bunch of work. And I got so much overhead. Well, I don't uh, about, you know, about two units, uh, two evaporator coils. And then I'm waiting uh, for a net 30 and hope I get paid. No, nah, you just do a trial. That's why I say, uh, you know, that's just on the back end because you, you ain't wait for warranty companies anyway. You still need to be word of mouth trying to get your name out there, but warranty companies just like extra. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that just a seasoning, you know. But sign up for all of them. That's what I recommend. You know, find all of them in your region, your area. Put an application there for every one of them, you know. And then whichever one um uh you know call you sign up for them and then you know you go from there but you don't have to accept calls they say if you busy or something you could turn warranty on and off you know um i advise you not to because uh because some warranty companies pay well i i got a warranty company that that has a like a uh a, a, a authorization limit of fifteen hundred dollars so anything uh Less than fifteen hundred dollars, I don't even have to call them. I just say okay, and and they pay me on time every time. You know what I'm saying? So some 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 warranty companies uh I want to do like a a two hundred dollar authorization limit. And you know HVAC don't and too on too many things, but like a capacitor or something like that costs under two hundred dollars. You know for parts and uh, labor and all that. You know what I'm saying? So you like I say you just got to kind of find. Go through all of them. And see, we have a lot of home warranty holders around here. Do you still build the customer the difference between what you require and what the home warranty company is paying? There is a lot of work out there. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, so just because you signed up for, uh, uh, I look at it like this, and, and I speak to the customer. So I make a, a agreement, you know, with a warranty company, to me, sometimes one one company they are fair, but now if it gets to a point where uh, it may be difficult access, or um, 
or 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 something that the warranty co- uh, company does not cover, if they don't cover it, I bill the customer. You know what I'm saying? So let's just say I get additional five hundred dollars from the customer, or I say, oh, it's going to cost this, or I know what I normally charge if I wasn't working for a warranty company because I'm gonna get a warranty company a, a break anyway. Because I agree, we we agreed to this when I signed up for for the warranty company. So they righteously should get like a break because you didn't do no marketing to get that customer. You got it. You got it. I don't know how you, you probably knew that customer or or knew that that air conditioning or that heater wasn't working, but from the warranty company and SEO work uh, or, or knocking on doors just to get a new customer can get quite expensive. Some people, you know, pay millions of dollars for uh tv commercials doing super bowls uh for hbac so you you got to give the warranty companies the benefit of the doubt because and then if you do a good job you know a lot of time man the them, them customers going to drop their warranty company but they'll still remember you or they're going to tell somebody uh also so you got to kind of weigh whatever that you kind of pay for let's say if, if, if you was investing in lead generation or you were investing in uh uh, cards, door hangers, uh, t-shirts, uh, your logo on your van. You kind of got to add that in and subtract that from uh, what the warranty company uh, pays. So I guess an example, if, if you were charging a customer some, for, let's say $1,000, maybe uh, you want to charge that warranty company $700. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I understand uh, what you're saying, HVAC one just far as why I bill out. I'm not doing anything if it's going to cost me or if I'm not making a profit. So somebody has to pay for it or they can have another contract to do the job. That's the bottom line with me. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. I'm not going to do it. Somebody has to pay for it. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. And, and, and then, you know what I'm saying? Uh, some, like I say, some jobs, uh, if, if I do want to uh, keep a, uh, you know, a good relationship with that warranty company and I know they keep me busy and I know they pay well, sometimes I'm not going to necessarily take a loss, but sometimes I might just, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this and break break even, but I, I never rarely run into those situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, Home Appliance, what's up? MC, he said he got a family league, league city, by the way. We like to visit Houston. All right, that's what's up, man. Yeah, League City, uh, that's down south. That's probably about 40, 45 minutes from me. Let me see. Applying, I work for American Home Shield, First American, and 210 Home Protection. All right, there you go right there. He just rec- he, uh, he just recommended you some, uh, some home warranty company. He said American Home Shield, First American, and 210 Home Buyers Warranty. All right, United Trade and say, what up, base back people? Thanks for the shout out yesterday, big bro. Already, man. Um, y'all go uh uh subscribe to United Trade Academy. He do a left clan HBAC work. All right. OG, can you run down some surefire ways a contractor can make good living? I'm always uh doubted around here. I'm a Young installer from Houston. I'm trying to get there. I'm living. I'm always doubted around here. What you mean by that? Oh, you can you run down some surefire ways a contractor can make a good living? Yeah, man, just do honest work. You know what I'm saying? Um, just try to, just try to, you know what I'm saying? Just try to leave, leave something better than uh you left it or where you found it. You know what I'm saying? The money gonna come. You know what I'm saying? Ace H- back. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing. Get the, you got to get the money. You know I say, man, we got to we got to love the process. You know what I'm saying? Us success. I see that shirt. Success is ahead. You know what I'm saying? But hey, but we still got to keep going. Whenever we get there, we are gonna get there. You know what I'm saying? But in the meantime, in between time, you know what I'm saying? Just try to add value. You know what I'm saying? I always. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a saying. Hey, when you, when you think you done done enough, do a little more. You know what I'm saying? And then success going to come on the back end. Don't even worry about that. You know what I'm saying? That, that's going to take care of itself. It's like a law of the universe. It's, it's got to happen. You know what I'm saying? A door going to open. You know what I'm saying? Somebody going to notice you. You know what I'm saying? If don't nobody notice you, it's like H-Bag woman say, nah, do it, do it yourself. 
You know what I'm saying? Just get out the way. That was Jane Brown had a song like that. Get out the way. I do it myself. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I say, yeah, man, just keep it up. You, you, you're a young installer. Keep installing the best you can. Enjoy what you're doing. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, this may not be for you. You know what I'm saying? But as long as you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to be successful. You know what I'm saying? Especially in this industry. That's why I say you got to look at the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? It's a billion-dollar industry. You know what I'm saying? If you're good at it, you're going to get some of that. You know what I'm saying? You just put a percentage of What percentage of that billions of dollars you want? And go get it. Let me say co-worker make it seem like I can make 60K a year on my own. Uh, I, was saying, I don't know if you caught my live stream yesterday. You know what I'm saying? If, if you want to make 60K, you can make 60K. If you want to make 30K, you can make 30K. If you want to make 160K, you can make 160K, man. It just, uh, you got to, you got to, you, 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 you know what I'm saying? Just just uh, try to develop, you know what I'm saying? Your mind, your mental, try to know everything about this industry that you can. Read books, you know, follow good YouTube channels. A lot of guys out there with a lot of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Know about this industry. You know what I'm saying? You can make us, you can make 60 million. You know, you know, you know what I mean on your own. True enough, you ain't gonna be able to do it with your two hands, but you know how to uh learn how to run a business and, and sell with different establishments, you can make that kind of money. Um a, a couple uh screens back I had a guy uh uh youngster from uh uh well, I think New Orleans, Louisiana. He's saying he want to uh, start inventing his own HVAC equipment. You know what I'm saying? Just like uh, Lennox. Lennox did it. Just like Carrier did it. Uh, whoever Train is, they did it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if he invent his own equipment with his name on there, hey, he going to be a billionaire. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't, uh, I always say, man, you just, you just, you just try to get as much training as you can. Try to know much about this industry as you can. Don't really uh 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 don't I, I ain't saying don't ask your co-workers uh question, man, but you want to try to be better than your co-workers too. They mind might be limited to, to only 60,000. Either that's that's that could be where they at, you know what I'm saying? Or they probably, you know, but it, it, you ain't gonna get it overnight. That's a good thing about HVAC. You're not gonna learn it overnight. And you ain't gonna make that kind of money overnight. It's a learning curve to the business part of it and the uh, you know, just the technical and the service and the installing part of it. You know what I'm saying? You, this this not McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? You you just can't find a bomb off the street and, and, and teach about how to make a burger. Nah, this is a skill. We in a skilled trade, you know what I'm saying? That's that's what we do. It takes a skill to do this. You gotta learn it. You know what I'm saying? But uh if that's your goal, though, the 60K, yeah, you can get it. You know what I'm saying? 60K might not be a lot to some. It might be a, a, a lot to some. All right. Hey, shout out to uh, uh, Kendrick, man, with the super sticker, man. We really appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Hey, thanks for joining the uh, the last live stream. If y'all new to this live stream, uh, Kendrick, he called in on the uh, other one, or he joined the stream on the other and shared how he got into HBAC. Also, I'm going to leave, uh, if anybody want to join, I'm going to be on here probably another 15, 20 minutes, and then you can uh, you can also join the show. But I'm going to try to share my screen also. Let me see here. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to share my screen, man. This right here is, uh, let's see, share screen. This right here is HVAC agent. So if anybody looking for a job, that's why I say, if, or if you're not comfortable at the job that you are, man, this is a great website right here. And like I say, you can be anywhere in the country. If you were thinking about moving or anything, put your information on in this website and they're not sponsored. This not, they're not sponsoring my channel or anything like this, but this is what I used when I was in Mississippi before I even came to uh, Houston and they got in their website a lot better now. They still uh, be sending me jobs to this day, but I uh, one of my uh, emails got hacked. And I don't have that information uh, no more, so I don't have my login information. But if you're a job seeker or employer or something like that, 
you can uh you can you, you can you can try to find employees and if you're a job seeker you can you know you can find you a job on here man but this is a, a awesome site right here you see they got ars uh rotor rooter sears crush them in the field but when you enter your information that just say if you was in uh that, that's let's say a state uh let me see let's say alabama or something like that you know what i'm saying you'll put your zip code and let's say mobile alabama all the jobs that are available if you want to put like a 30 or 40 mile radius from mobile every job that's hiring they're going to give you they're going to send you an email and, and they'll send you the uh the contact as far as the email and the phone number even to the employee that's hiring you know what i'm saying so this is a great site right here it's called hvac agent man i advise anybody even if you already got a job i think we, we're speaking uh we were speaking uh about uh uh don't just get tied down to one job you really want something that that's going to that is going to be way around it let's just say like the last guy that i was uh uh what's his name i ain't show uh with the installer you know what i'm saying don't if if that if that's all they want you to do is do install man you need to be more way around especially if, if you want to make the you know the bigger dollars the 60k the 70k the 80k you know what i'm saying um it's gonna be hard to do that just installing all the time because really when you install y'all probably not installing no more than one two or three units a day you know what i'm saying because your body can only do so much you know what i'm saying but that's not goes to say now you can be a great installer don't get it twisted you can do that for four years i, I see you in texas let's say if you do that for four years you'll be eligible to get your contractor license and that's how if that's the only experience you got hey you, you still you can still open your company up and I, hey you can start your install company you can trade them you can, you can you can train them guys to be installers you know what i'm saying just like say i like to do subcontractor work hey four years from now if i know you're a great installer i'll hire you to do all my installs for me you know what i'm saying so man there's so many uh different ways that you can make money in this trade you know what i'm saying like i say you ain't necessarily got to think about the money but the money gonna come and i would not be doing if 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 it wasn't no money in this industry you know what i'm saying i love it but i don't love it enough to just be doing it for free but uh like i say sometimes we got to think outside the box though man it's, it's a lot of ways to make money but uh, like i say this site right here and like what me and kendra was saying uh you have to go back to the last what's called so many different things you can do look counter sales and parts you know what i'm saying they, they hiring for that uh designer dispatcher a drafter engineer you know what i'm saying you, you need to be you know you need to have a de uh, degree to be an engineer but we have engineers a lot of time man uh hvac uh tech we can keep it we can hold a job down before some of the engineers the engineer got these degrees but hey if you do got your degree that's what i was going to school for to be an engineer i was going to try to you know be an engineer for my commercial uh hvac company i used to work for you know what i'm saying but i like the contractor side better look you can be a field supervisor finance and account manager a foreman uh general manager an uh, installation manager like the guy uh that i was just speaking to you hey you do you install it now but if you want to stick with the company that you with you might want to be the, the install manager you know what i'm saying installer uh instructor trainer operation manager pipe fitter project manager purchasing uh quality insurance quality, uh, quality control manager a uh, sales uh, coordinator sales manager sales representative service manager sheet metal worker steam fitter superintendent technician technician for appliance uh, ammonia refrigeration that's that's another thing a lot of people don't uh uh speak about you want to deal with ammonia you know what i'm saying you get certified for ammonia you can go and take classes for ammonia um you google that i know they be, they they had old courses in tennessee and really all, all over the united states you know what i'm saying they make good money as far as ammonia it's dangerous but that's what they paying you the extra dollars for look chiller technician uh technician commercial cooking equipment technician 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 uh geothermal hbacr 
man so much let me click on this so i just clicked on uh for a technician hbscr see they, they hiring right here in florida the uh 34741 uh i can't pronounce that kissing me they hiring in arizona Tampa, arizona eight eight five uh two eight two area code or zip code tempe arizona there you go right there connecticut uh new, new london all over california new jersey new york uh i'm gonna click on one uh let's see here oregon let's go on the uh let's go on, let's go to florida see what they're talking about all right we're gonna click on florida see you can join and apply you know what i'm saying and they tell you the job description uh commercial come join our team Total Comfort Group is leading national provider of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and project properties across the United States. Look, competitive, the competitive compensation with our resources and training, our technicians are able to make over 120000 per year. There you go right there. What's the guy's name we're, talk, we're talking to? The installer? As far as a 60 k There you go right there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this company right here making 120. You know, and, and this working for a company. You know what I'm saying? They this probably 401 401 k Uh let me see benefits. 80, 80 to 120k benefit packages based on experience, prescription drug insurance, dental and vision, 401k, two weeks uh paid time off and holidays. And you get a service truck, a phone, uniform, tools, continuing education, one hundred dollar reimbursement fee. They give you boots. That's why I say. That's why I say look for companies like this where they tell you, you know, what I'm saying continuing education. So there, there you have it right there. So the minimum experience they're looking for two to four years. Now, now I'm sure they say, hey. You know, you can make over a hundred, a hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. To uh, you need two, two to four years experience. So you get on with them. You know, sky's the limit. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta have the headache of being a business owner. You you can make over six figure. You know, working for this company right here. They say this first shift, so they probably got three shifts, whatever fits your lifestyle, or t- or two shifts, however they do it. You know. But it, this sounds like a good company. You want to look for stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? When they say continuing education, that's what I always preach. That's, that's why I say, if you can get on, hands on, I, well, I always preach, however, it, whatever it takes to get your foot in the door, do that route. But in HBAC, you always need continuing education. So if you can get with a company that's willing to invest in you, go with that company. Don't get tricked, you know what I'm saying, with these moms and pops. They, they, they don't want to, uh, they just teaching you hands-on. Nah, man. Um, but, that, yeah, there you have it, man. Go another one in Connecticut right here. And this one right here, you ain't got to sign up. You can call Frank right now. You know what I'm saying? There go Frank email right there. So whoever in the Connecticut area, if, if I got some Connecticut uh, people out there, look, he's he looking for an installer, pipe fitter, steam, uh, technician, boilers, chillers. Commercial refrigeration, there you go right there. I'll let Frank. We have an opening for a tech who uh, possesses top-tier troubleshooting skills and an installer pipe fitter with experience. Our business is focused on commercial and industrial HVAC within New London, uh, Middlesex, and Wittenham Counties, Connecticut. We ask that you have an S or D Connecticut license and a minimum of five year commercial experience. We can uh, customize your compensation to meet your needs. Man, look, everybody say, man, ain't too many industry they gonna customize your compensation to fit your needs. You know what I'm saying? That's why, hey, when we say, hey, man, hey, if you a top tier troubleshooting, uh, you got top tier uh, troubleshooting skills, you can write your own check. You know what I'm saying? If you bring a good personality with that, with good soft skills, man, you can go in there interview and be like, okay, I want this much right here. You know what I'm saying? They're going to give it to you. You know? And and then once once they give it to you, it's up to you to go, go up there and uh, 
Uh, like I say, look, 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 look no folks in the eye and say what you mean, mean what you say. And then you go and execute once you once you get the job, you know. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people, they can talk a good game too, but you know what I'm saying? Hey, I used to, I, I used to work for a guy. He said, man, we hire and fire him. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you give him the opportunity. But if you ain't about what you if you ain't about what you're talking about, hey, we just get rid of you. You know what I'm saying? But sky's the limit, man. But hey, H back agent, man. So I, I advise anybody in this live screen, you know, uh save that in your phone or whatever and uh sign up for them. I think it's I think it's free. I know when I signed up uh a few years back, it, it was free. I don't think they charge anything either. So it's a free account. And, and I swear they they email you jobs in your area, you know. I mean, daily and on a, on a weekly basis, you'll see people around your area that's hiring. But all they're gonna pretty much ask you what your zip code is. It's like, it's like I said, this thing nine zero two one zero. That's a little TV show we used to watch back in the day. Nine zero two one zero. That's in California. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you, like I say, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, moving away or something like that. That's how you can, uh, you know, that's how you can find some of these jobs, man. And uh, so that's what's up. Let me see if I can catch up on some of these comments. Starting out, working on the weekend, working on the weekend first, bro. Okay. What age? What age do I want to retire? I don't know, man. I ain't, I ain't really thinking about retire. I just want to re retire my wife uh, early. And, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll work as long as I can work, probably. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want my wife working, you know, too long. You know what I say? Um, that, that's one of my goals, retire my wife. Will you ever work for a company if they paying 200 k a year and not work a lot? Man, I'm like prime time. I entertain that. Yeah, I definitely entertain. I, I won't say I, I won't, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, right now, I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Not in the near future, but you know, in the future, yeah. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. Especially like we just talking about retirement. My time retirement year, somebody wanna pay me 200 k you know what I'm saying? Maybe to go uh uh manage or 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 um, you know, maybe teach some youngsters or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um uh, uh, you know, I can say, cause it, you know what I'm saying. Actually, I like the freedom, man. Two hundred k. That that sound good. That old man. That that, that sound good. But like I say I just like the freedom, man. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Yeah. I like the freedom, man. I was say even what a man. I can I can be making fifty, forty, or fifty thousand if I can make make that on my own. And 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 um and I'm uh you know. Being able to provide for my family, you know what I'm saying? Uh, be able to pay my bills, you know what I'm saying? Bro, I'll be, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Money really ain't nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I love the money, but it ain't really nothing to me like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, shout out, shout out to uh, Ace Back Woman, man. We appreciate it, man. She said, keep up the good work, Walt. Keep up the good work, man. I appreciate it. All right. Shout out to A A's and G, man, for the super chat. He say we in here. All right. Hey, Asia, man, I had checked out one of your videos, too, man. I did subscribe to your channel. Uh, you need to drop more videos, man. I think the last video, uh, you were taking back a compressor. I, I had checked it out, man. Look like looked like you was excited. Like it was a smooth transition. But I, I did enjoy that video, man. Yeah. Tyrese say, good work, bro. Let me say, how much do you think a uh, HVAC service tech should make after two years of experience in Indiana? I say about thirty an hour. Um, see, man, like I like I told you, man, like I was just saying, man, money do me, money make the world go round. Don't get me wrong, man, but um, you know what I'm saying. Uh, you probably didn't catch my screen yes yesterday. But I was saying, man, it really no matter if you got five, 10, 15, or 20 years experience. I know people are probably doing this for 15 years, and it's a technician that's only been doing this four or five years, and they're a way better technician than the technician been doing this 15 to 20 years. Some people just don't get it. So I'm not going to pay you just by uh, 
how many years you've been doing the trade. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to pay you by what you know, you, you know, just not experience. I want, want to pay you by your experience, what you worked, worked on, even are you retaining what you worked on? I don't want to see a resume and, and, and just seeing that you worked on a refrigeration unit or you just, or you, uh, or, uh, or you worked on a split system or you worked on a, a, a president unit or a Voyager or whatever carrier your chillers is. You know what I'm saying? I want to know, do you, you know what I'm saying? I, I need to pay you. Um, I want to give you a competitive wage, but I ain't just going, just cause you've been doing it for two years, you know, you you could been you could have been going in the mechanical room sleeping for two years. Um, like I say, because you have to discipline yourself in this trade right here. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody just gonna be walking over you. Uh, I mean, uh, watching over you, making sure you uh, doing what you're supposed to do. This is an individual sports right here. This ain't it's a team sport. You know, especially if you want to build a, a a good business, you do need you know what I'm saying some good technicians, but. It's really an individual sport, man. It's really you your own supervisor when you get into this right here. You know what I'm saying? You really got to dig down and be the best that you can be. You need to be thinking when you're working out in this field, true enough, you're in the attic by yourself or you're in a mechanical room by yourself. You kind of need to be uh, uh, acting like your supervisor over you, helicoptering you, like you're really watch, uh, watching you. You know what I'm saying? So you need to be doing some retaining information all the time. But I, I just don't believe in paying somebody just because they got so many years of experience. You know what I'm saying? You've been doing it two years, but you could be worth $10 an hour. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you know, I say if uh, if you've been doing this two years and, and if I got a technician been doing this 10 years and you a better technician than him, I think you should get paid more than him. You know what I'm saying? But we all know uh, in HVAC, you ain't about to, you're not, it's a learning curve, man. You ain't worth $30. I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, you know what I'm saying? HVAC guy one-on-one, I'm, I'm going to tell you too, if you only been doing this uh, 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 two years, you're not worth, you're not worth $30. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, you, you probably could be good, you know what I'm saying? Maybe 20, 23 or something like that. But two two years, man, we, 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 I don't think the uh, industry, if the industry making that, that kind of, look, $30, you only been doing this uh, 10 years. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, two years, I ain't gonna lie. The next man that been doing this 10 years, he gonna want $50 an hour. And then the man that's been doing, doing uh, 15, 20 years, if if you get thirty dollars an hour, he he gonna want sixty dollars an hour, and then it's kind of like we you watering down. Um, you gonna put a company out of business. You know what I'm saying? You, you, we paying a technician that kind of money, or like I say, or like I say, I don't know if you do residential or commercial now. If you uh, I know some companies though on commission basis, you might go in there if you making money on sales like that. You you selling a, a bunch of equipment. Maybe on a commission basis, we can get you up to thirty dollars an hour or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But hey, I can't put a cap on what you can make. If you think you deserve thirty dollars an hour, hey, go for it. But I'll be very careful if I only been doing this two years and I I go to my uh your supervisor, your service manager, the demand at thirty dollars an hour. I think that's kind of a stretch. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say, man, the money is a good end goal, but Trust the process, man. Enjoy it, man. Don't, don't. It's almost, you've been doing it two years, almost, man. Like, I, I remember, man, when I was uh, uh, 10 years old, I went to go visit my family in Florida. And then I want to, uh, it was in the summertime. My birthday is in October. And then I'm telling them I'll be 12 years old next year. You know what I'm saying? I ain't made 11 yet. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, 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 I'm trying to be more growner than I am. You know what I'm saying? I think I was 11 and I told him I'd be 13 next year or something. I just wanted to be a teenager so bad, man. So sometimes, man, I wish I can, I can, I can rewind. I don't really wish, but you know, hindsight, I wish I done, done a lot of things different. I wish I would have enjoyed the present time, man. Just enjoy where I'm at at this time. Enjoy where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? Don't, the money going to come, man. You're a good technician, but don't, don't just, you know, Hey man, I want this right here because you see a lot. You we, you see a lot of other guys because a lot of times you might not be able to manage that money. You might not be ready for that kind of money yet. You know what I'm saying? You might get that money 
and make a bunch of bad decisions and stuff like that. So just slow down, man, and, and just in, enjoy being a, a HVAC tech. All right. David Wade. All right. Carlos, say thanks for the motivation. You know what I'm saying? Right, but let's say you're a hard worker and, and uh and that knows that knows their stuff. Hey, like I say, man, if you think you deserve it, I can't tell you, uh, you know, I just know for a fact, you know what I'm saying? It's a learning curve in HVAC. I always teach that, man. You're just not gonna learn it overnight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you can be a hard worker, man. You you can be a hard worker, but you know. I know guys that work hard, but they're going the wrong way. I'm talking about speeding, going fast. Hey, man, hey, man, hey, hey, man, I see you sweating and, 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 and you're running fast, man, but we're going this way. You know what I'm saying? You're going the opposite way. Turn around. Let's go this way. You know what I'm saying? So, but, hey, to each his own, man. I, I, like I said, I don't want to talk it down or dismotivate you, but just be very careful, though. All right. We got to keep uh, getting knowledge. Yeah. Never get snagged in learning. You know what I'm saying? Be a sponge on the job and check everything will help you build your skill in the trade and be more of an asset to any company. Yes, sir. And what Michael say, he say be a sponge. That's what I always say too, man. Be a sponge. Try to absorb as much as you can. You know what I'm saying? If, hey, especially, man, like your first two years, you don't even need to be you don't need, that's why I say you probably ain't been following me for a while, man. But I always say, man, by your first two or three years, four years, act like you don't really know nothing, man. Just absorb all the knowledge in. You know what I'm saying? Trust the process, man. It's going to come. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get there. Just right now, man, don't, I, I want to tell anybody been doing this one or two years, don't worry about the money right now. Just get focused on learning the knowledge of the trade, man. Just, dude, it, it's more stuff in this. It's more learning. I can I can uh, fathom all the knowledge and age back, man. All these books, man. I probably don't know 10, 15 percent of uh, 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 the rest of the 100 percent that I need to know. You know what I'm saying? There's so much that I don't know. There's already uh, knowledge that's been here, but it's so much changing every day, too. You know what I'm saying? Just for the energy efficient. It's just so much to learn, man. You can't can't learn it all. So I say just slow down, try to learn as much as you can, try to soak up, soak up as much as you can. Luke Malone say facts. A and G say still learning. Still try to learn to trade. Yep. You him, man. Hey, they say just learn. Definitely. I'm making 27 uh doing doing it almost three years, but I'm in a dual trade. He say, hey, he, he had 27. Hey, and he only been doing it three years. Hey, so I can't say, you know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, if the money out there, somebody willing to pay you that, that kind of money, hey, go for it. Let me say, trust the process. Great information. Thanks for sharing the knowledge and experience. Uh, that's S13, man. Appreciate you. Uh, can you get on the screen? Yeah, the link is in the description. Uh, let me let me post one more uh, time, Trey. Yeah, you come on. I don't know if you uh caught, caught my last last screen. Let us know how you got. I know you do some electrical work. Uh, if you want to come on and share how you got into air, uh, electrical and HVAC, we'd be glad to hear from you. Let me see. What's the quickest way to get installs as a subcontractor running the business? Uh, I uh, let me see. What's the quickest way to get if you're a subcontractor? I think, man. Um, I've run up on guys that that that, that do sub work at uh at supply houses. So I I post up at a supply house. I got me a good subcontractor man. He 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 you know he got his crew. He got a box truck. You know what I'm saying? Met him at the supply house. We exchange cards. So um I would say just post up at a supply house. You know what I'm saying? Uh, find the most busy supply houses, and and just. You know, have your business card and you see contractors in and out of there. You know, you, you should be able to like uh, you know, look at their van. You should be able to spot uh like independent contractors. You know what I'm saying? You see a guy like me, you know what I'm saying, uh, that don't look like he probably got no big company. I, I do kind of 
you know, I got my shirts, I got my vans or whatever, but uh, you can kind of tell, man, somebody, you know, running their own show. They ain't one of the big brands out here. You know, they got the commercials and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but that, that's that's probably what I do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you might want to, uh, you might want to do SEO work. You know what I'm saying? I say Google is the key. And then you actually, you know, you actually, uh, might want to uh, put keyword a uh, keyword in your SEO. You might want to try to own that page of Google. So if anybody types subcontractor for HVAC, you want your business to come up. Let's see. They waste, they learn every day. United Tradesmen is nice. Uh, get into courses like Heaton, uh, Nate, and things of that nature to get certified. Yeah. And we see, Lucky Moore say it's a curve, but these new guys just looking for money, and I get it. So these young guys that want to uh, grow and learn it quickly, especially with all the videos and information on the internet. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, I can say HBA, man. Hey, you can make some good money, but I can say to me, the best technicians are the ones that really want to learn the trade, got a passion for the trade. I can say, well, man, I, I know it's a shortage in this industry. I have been with companies. I have been with coworkers, fellow technicians. And I'm knowing, man, if I had a company, I wouldn't hire them. You know what I'm saying? I, their work ethic is poor. You know what I'm saying? They they troubleshoot skills not up to par, especially as long as they've been into it. I have seen guys come in this industry really just for the money, just far as they only they only gonna be a filter changer. You know what I'm saying? They only gonna be able to do maintenance. They still don't know how to troubleshoot um, basic troubleshoot needs. You know what I'm saying? And they not not even looking to move up the ladder or anything like that. They they not searching for training. They're not reading their books uh, behind the scenes. They are not asking for additional training. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say, but they they still hire because it's a shortage in HVAC. You know what I'm saying? You still need even the little knowledge that they have. You still need them. You know what I'm saying? And then how companies, you know, discrimination and all that, you know what I'm saying? Or, or that they scared to get sued. Sometimes you can't fire them. You know what I'm saying? So once they do get on after their probation period, uh, you stuck with them. Uh, you gotta, you gotta write them up about three or four times before you can get rid of them. You know what I'm saying? And, and some, some, some people say it's cheaper to keep them, you know, or, 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 or the little things that we do need, they are beneficial. You do, you rather hire somebody and be able to move them up, move them right along. You know what I'm saying? Instead of staying in that position, because you, you kind of want to move them up and hopefully they can train the person that, that started where they at, but they stuck at, you know what I'm saying? Well, I know it. That's why I say this, this is a cool industry. I, you know what I'm saying? Even, hey, I, I could have, I, I could have been, uh, I could have been straight where I was, you know what I'm saying? And, and still make a good living. I, I know I'm talking about just doing the normal thing. You, you know what I mean? But I always like to say, I, like I say, I always like to uh, uh, leave something better than what I found it. You know what I'm saying? That, that's just me. I don't like to sit around, man. I like to, I like to, I like to move. When you're green, you're growing. That's true. I ain't never look at it like that, but that's true. I United Trade, man. Uh, if you want to come on, man, uh, uh, Thomas B, say what up. I left the uh, let me leave the uh, link. If anybody want to come on, man, I'm staying here a couple more minutes though. It's, uh, it's been an hour. Sure, I think we did the last screen another hour, but uh, it's seven o'clock. But uh, yeah, man, y'all want to come on? Come on. Uh, the link in the, in the comment. John, John G say, I would say just keep track of your numbers. Know what you bring to the company as far as revenue, service agreement, uh, closing ratio. This is the way uh, when you want more money, you can have. Yeah. Yeah, don't go in there empty handed. You know what I'm saying? Like I was saying yesterday, you, uh, you ask questions or when you know you deserve a raise, you know you deserve a raise. You know what I'm saying? 
And and then I, you know, at the end of the day, a company know too. They know. And so so that might be worth the case, the masses and applying, uh, applying that can't hang. All right. Y'all see the uh, I'm gonna get trades in a couple more minutes, man, and see if you want to join. If not, I'm gonna shut it down. But if anybody else wanna join, uh, you can. There you go. You're not uh, waiting for you to add me to the screen. No, I don't see. You, you never popped up yet. I would say the, uh, you got to click on the link and you should pop up in my, uh, should pop up down here and I'll add it. Let me see. Do you recommend HVAC school? Like I say, man, I answer that question. I'll say, man, whatever it takes to get your foot in the door, man, go that route. You know what I'm saying? I always say if you can just get the hands-on experience, get with a company and let them train you, I say go that route. But some companies want to see, uh, because some of these certifications, like the EPA, you can get that certification on your own. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't need to go to school to get no EPA license. So if you at least have the EPA license, you can go to a company and tell them that, okay, I got my EPA license. Um, but like I say, man, um, school, you always need school. I just don't really recommend going into a bunch of debt, you know what I'm saying, with a school to get into HVAC because it all, you need schooling, you know, the basic refrigeration cycle, basic ele ele uh, electricity, you need that. It's not going to make sense while you're in school. Then once you get the hands-on experience, it's going to kind of tie itself together for it all makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So you can't do really do one without the other. But if you can get the hands-on experience with a company, I'll go their route. And hopefully when you get off of work in the evenings or on the weekends, you do additional education or continuing schooling or, you know, additional training. Uh, But yeah, man, whatever it takes to get your foot in the door, man, I say, I say, go for it. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, I see your trade trade academy, but uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can add trade academy real quick. Cause usually they pop up down here. I don't see you in the what's car. Oh man, my my bad, man, my bad. I know what it was, man. I still had my uh, I we, we was on about an hour ago, and I'm still copy and pasting in a comment the screen from uh, the screen from the uh the last uh youtube live so let me give you another link to this live right here my fault my fault let me see i got you right now hold up out let me see video five we're gonna invite here go copy right here i got you right here so this the new uh try this one right here this the new one right here And then I'll let you in there. There you go. There you go. Mike, check. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear. Yeah, my bad, man. I was I was live probably about an hour ago, and I I was copying and pasting the uh, link for the last screen. Oh yeah, man. Hey, first let me say, man, drop a super chat for my boy Ace Back People, man. He give me y'all exclusive access, man. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Yeah, man. What what's on your mind, man? How you uh? T I, I t tell the audience a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, I know you. I know you. Uh. Uh, uh, electrician and, and then you're doing your HVAC thing also as far as contracting yeah. um, okay. kind of like uh, let them know how you got into uh, 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 electrical and then how, how kind of how you branched out you know and start working for yourself well man uh, so coming out of high school I graduated 2003 out of Shreveport Louisiana and uh, went to college man for one year and I kind of did like 
kind of did good my first semester, but man, them second semester, man, I started partying real heavy, man, and my grades just went down. And so my dad was like, we ain't paying for your school no more. So uh, they sent me to Job Corps, you know, because it's a free program. So, uh, or free for me to go, I didn't have to pay for it. So they had different trades there, and uh, my dad suggested uh, uh, electrician because I was going to be welding at first. You know, I did welding in high school. Uh, my last few years of high school, I did I did welding. So I, I said, let me try that because I'm already familiar with welding. So he was like, no, don't do welding. It's dirty. You got to breathe it on the fumes. Go to do the do electrician. So that's what I did. And uh, it was uh, once I got out of that, uh, once I got out of the job course, like a one year program, then I went to an actual electrician school, which is a four year school. Uh, so I'm roughly at that time, I'm roughly 19, 20, just starting out as a first year apprentice on the actual construction site doing uh, electrician work every day, 40 hours a week. You know, that's after I uh, graduated job course. You know, I went to another independent. Uh, electrical contracting school where uh, I was actually working for a company, you know, 40 hours a week, you know, overtime, just like we work right now, you know, and uh, I was going to school one night a week. So that's how I got into the trade. And man, so I've been in it since like 04, you know, late 04, early 05. And it's, I've been in it ever since. And uh, just came up through the ranks, you know, digging shovels. I mean, digging, digging ditches, you know, uh, all the way up to getting my journeyman license, get my master electrician license, you know, and I got my master license back in 2014 for electrical. But all the while, in 2014, in 2014, that's when I got my uh, a master electrician license. Yeah. When 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 are y'all eligible to get your uh get your license in uh as far as uh electrical? Oh look, so the process is like so. It's kind of similar to how you do it with the uh, class A and class B, but uh, HVAC license, but you got to have uh, four years and 8,000 hours to get your journeyman license. Well, they're just to qualify to, uh, uh, they're just to qualify to even take the test. You still got to pass the test. So you got to have at least 45 years and that's roughly 8,000 hours. So if you look at, you do 2,000 hours a year for four years, it's, that's, that's your 8,000 hours. After you do your four years, Four or five years now you can qualify to take your journeyman electrician test so i did that but I, I failed the test my first try i failed to test my first try. so the second time i took it that's when i passed it and i guess uh so maybe like two years after that exactly right at two years uh i went out and got my master electrician license because i knew like you know how you you know that you're talented individual and you learn stuff quick and plus you see people that they're putting over you right you're like man how do you put this guy over me and uh i know more than him i show up on time i'm like the perfect employee perfect employee perfect attendant so i'm like man they're not giving me my just do uh i talk to my wife all the time look I, i'm gonna uh i'm gonna do my own thing so i just started i bought me an old work truck an old 89 ford Started driving around that, doing side jobs on the weekend. Had a ladder rack on there. I ain't had no air conditioning in the truck. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And you, That's what you, I started out with, driving that back and forth. And you in Texas, man? Right? I'm in Texas, yeah. But no AC in the truck. No, hey, tell you, no AC. The heat worked, but no AC in the truck. An old 1989 Ford. I'm driving around this in Dallas, in North Dallas. <laughs> Ooh wee. Yeah, man. You gotta get just imagine. Everybody running around in new cars, man. You know, but look, I like what uh HVAC people say. You know, you gotta have that vision, man. How he started his, how he started, where he started it in his in his vehicle, sleeping in the vehicle, man. You gotta have that vision that long term. Sure, everybody gonna drive by you in their new car, whatever, whatever. But you best believe, I ain't, I ain't got no college debt, I ain't got no school debt. I don't have no uh, only debt I got is my house. I don't have no car debt, all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So if you wanna start a business like you got to start from the ground and you just can't go out and buy all this expensive stuff you know what i'm saying because i got three children and a wife you know what i'm saying so all this stuff comes into into account when you're trying to be successful and start a company you know what i'm saying especially at a young age like ain't nobody give me no money i ain't had no i ain't had no college fund i ain't had no mama giving me money daddy giving me money i did all this stuff on my own you know what i'm saying so yeah. um but anyway i don't want to ramble on but uh Nah, man, nah, nah, nah. I love to hear that, man. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, I, hey, I know the struggle, man. You know what I'm saying? And like, like you say, I preach that, man. Doing, 
man, I, I, I preach, man, they try to do it debt free. You know what I'm saying? Because I, yeah. I know some people will, you know, they, they, they will go out and, and get a new vehicle, man, forty and fifty thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that, that, that kind of make it harder on yourself. You know what I'm saying? When you're going forty, fifty thousand dollars debt just for a vehicle. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that that just put more stress. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh man, I gotta make this work. I gotta make this work. Cause man, you got a seven hundred dollar, uh, and because you know you need you need insurance. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We gotta pay insurance. Uh, you know, yeah. once or twice a year. You gotta think about. You know, you gotta think about that that stuff too. Yeah. So I figured, you, you know, what I'm saying, this far as your overhead go, um, yeah. just, just try to keep debt to a minimal. You know what I'm saying? Really, really, I don't know how I go in debt. It just for um, you know, at the supply houses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just for yeah. parts I need uh and stuff like that you know i got a business yeah. credit card yeah. you know what i'm saying but i'm like you i don't have no personal debt you know what i'm saying yeah. me and my wife don't have no personal debt i don't, on the debt that we do have is our mortgage and, and you know what i'm saying and that's the yeah. way we like to roll so we we, we we and that's why i tell people too man i love the freedom you know what i'm saying that's why i'm not tripping i ain't got to make 200 300 or a million dollars a year you know what i'm saying because yeah. my, my 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 uh my overhead is so low you know what i'm saying yeah um and I do understand what you know. Some people have to, uh, you know, if you want to think about, uh, you know, maybe expanding or something like that in the future right. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just recommend, you know, getting that foundation started. Though, don't 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 stress yourself out with all that debt. You know what I'm saying? That unnecessary debt like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just start low, just just like you're doing, man. But go ahead. I ain't, I ain't mean to cut well, you no, off. No, no. I was just gonna say just to just to kind of sum it up, wrap it up. Uh, no, man. So I was just I was just um. For a long time, man, I was like, so it got to a point on the job site where people would come to me for answers instead of going to the foreman. So that's how I knew I said it's time for me to just make my exit because I'm never going to like climb that ladder that it's kind of like, it's like, it's like, man, you know, the company I was working for, they did such large work, man. And, and what kind of vibe? What kind of environment was it in? Was it like a uh, industrial? Was it like a uh, commercial okay. building or so, like a union? So no, so it was no union. So this particular uh, company, we did like big government contracts. So we would do like uh, like big hospitals. We do like big airport remodels. So it was commercial work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it'd be when I say large projects, I mean the projects would be three or four years. It's so just one project. You know, from start to finish, from the ground, and to 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 finish. You know, or like a, like I said, like a terminal. Uh, like we did several terminals at a DFW airport. We, we did the whole remodel on the terminal, the electrical remodel. Yeah. You know? so, so you probably didn't get the opportunity to get in the office and try to learn the back end of it, as far as the government contracts and how they got them and, and all that good stuff, huh? Only to. Uh, only to uh not with that particular comic book. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, I figured that if they didn't want to give you no raises and stuff like that, I already know well, see, that. Well, see, no, I would get the raises. Okay. I just want to get the position. Oh, okay. Okay. You wanted the yeah. position. I, yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted the position. Yeah, yeah, because that's how uh you just talking about like the supervisor and the man the management position. Well, well, how it goes, like you just be a kind of like a working class journeyman in the field where you're doing the install, you install the pipe, you run you pulling wire, you wiring up panels, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have what you call a foreman, you know, and then what you have is a superintendent on top of that, you know, and then on top of that, you can kind of be, you can kind of move into estimating or project manager. So I had to leave that company and go to another company. Now I got that. Once okay. I left that company and worked somewhere else, now right. they put me into that role to where I was doing uh, project managing and estimating. So I would use the estimating software to estimate, you know, I was going my, my highest bid that I estimated was around like a little bit over 300,000, you know, and uh, then I was, what kind of job, what kind of job, what kind of job contracts y'all were going after then? So we do, like, uh, we do like public school remodels. Okay. Or we do like, uh, like uh, we did like a hospital parking lot remodel. So we do um, just any, any type of big, I don't want to say big, but any type of uh, commercial work, we pretty much go after it. It didn't really matter what it, what it was. You know, if it was within our scope and we had the manpower, we pretty much would go after it, you know. So there was, now, let me go back because I don't want to get too ahead. So I got my master electrician license when I was at that first company when I was trying to climb that ladder. Mm -hmm. So I got my journal license at that company. And two years later, I was still working for the company. I got my master license with that company also. Did they so, know you had your, did they know you had your master yes. license? They knew. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, man. The only only brother and the only one of the only ones on the on the job said they got a master license. They, they still overlooking all that. Younger guys with younger with, with less experience. Nepotism, man. I hate to say it like that, man. Yeah, yeah. But it took me going through that to get me to where I am right now. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But um, so just to kind of just go a little bit further with that. So I left that company. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, I quit that company and I went out on my own. Because at that time, once I, this was 2014, I got my master license. So I had already, I had already been planning. I had already bought me a van. I had bought everything I needed to go out on my own. So, so when you went out on your own, because I got this yeah. question yesterday. Yeah. Um, what was the hardest thing for you um, when you went out on your own? Overcoming fear. Overcoming fear, huh? Yeah. Fear yeah. and what? Because I knew how to do the work. Yeah. And. God, I, God, I think that that's, that's almost the same thing I said, but go ahead. Just the fear. So and, what, but. And it ain't necessarily coming, overcoming what I mean. Like, see, at this time, like, I'm still, I'm, I'm in my, I'm what, 20, 20, what was that? I was 29. Was that, is it? Wait, I was 27. So I was 29 when I got my max electrician license. So I'm, I'm, I ain't even 30 yet. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, and here I'm trying to calculate for the future, you know, my family and everything. So it was more so about that, not so much. So, my so when, you, when you say overcoming fear, fear to get started, or once you, once you got started, uh, not necessarily get started in doing the business because I had already been doing side work. I knew I could do it. There was, it was just like, I, I, I was trying to see how I'm going to keep progressing my family, you know, because when you got that 40 hour paycheck, you can kind of estimate, okay, year, one year, if I save it for one year, I can get a house. Another year, I save it, I can get a whatever, whatever. You know? mm -hmm. But now I'm trying to calculate, am I still going to be able to, you know, do this and have my babies and all this other stuff, you know? So, because my wife don't work. My wife, since we since we since we uh been married ten years, my wife, my wife hasn't worked. She hasn't worked on no job, you know. Like my wife, she 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 homeschooled. We got three children. She homeschooled all of them. So my wife, man, my shout out, shout out, shout out for you, man, big time. So yeah, just to kind of so that's when I so I'm putting it in perspective what I was my fear was because mm -hmm. I had a plan, you know, and we, before me and my wife got married, I said, hey, you got to homeschool because they try to put me in special ed. When I was in, in elementary school, so I said you absolutely have to homeschool. If my children come out like me, you gotta homeschool. They can't come out like me and go to the public school because they gonna try to do that, trying to do that okie doke. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just to make a long story short, yeah, just, yes, sir, man. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying yeah. it. Hey, Asian, you enjoying this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do my plan and still make money and you know just move my life along. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, it was 2014. Yeah, it was it was a uh, 20 no yeah 2014 that's when i got my master license then that's when I, I went out on that same year i quit the company and i went out so i stayed out roughly like a year and i had uh got slow you know i still had a little bit of money saved and i ended up having to go back to work and then uh so that's when i got into the project management and the, and the uh, estimating role because they figured that i had ran my company for for a year on my own Mm -hmm. that you can do estimating and you can do project managing. So they just gave me that position like that. Just based off, I was doing my own business. They gave me that position. I ain't never done est estimating. I never used estimating software. I never had to do uh, like loss, uh, profit and loss sheets on project managing. They just threw me in it and said, since mm -hmm. you do your business, you can do this. You know what I'm saying? So that's mm -hmm. how I got into that role, you wow. know what I'm saying, of doing estimating and project managing. So from running your own from running your own business resume yeah, type deal. Yeah, but it was a blessing to do that because mm -hmm. I got a chance to see from a professional level using a bidding software, mm -hmm. you know, having to learn, you know, like I said, I, I use that software to bid three hundred thousand dollars worth of job, you know, and I was winning job, you know. I mean, just within the one year, I was making more than than my senior project managers. But see, here's a, here's what I had. I had like I had years of experience of just doing the actual work, knowing how many labor hours it's going to cost to do this, do that. And the guys, my senior project managers, they had been in the field for a long time. So they had that disconnect. So I had that advantage over them. So when I would bid jobs, I would bid it like I'm going to be doing the work myself. So, I mean, I would put a lot of money in them and I was still winning jobs. And they'd be like, man, you get a home run. You know, mm -hmm. 
And when we go into these meetings to do the profit and loss and uh, statements on, you know, what projects made money, what projects lost money, man, I had to be sitting back with my, just sit, kind of sitting back like this because I didn't want to make my supervisor or my senior project manager, I didn't want him to feel kind of bad because my jobs had made a lot more money than he is. This is, within, this is within my first year of doing that position. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to dominate. Let them know. You know, but anyway. Hey. <clears throat> but, yeah. but man, I'm, I'm glad you shared that part of it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I, I try to tell people also, because this part of the fear, the fear, what well, I like to say, jump, or just go out of it. One, because once you get your contract license, though, and then say if you do start a business and it don't work out exactly like you thought it was going to work out, you know yeah. what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong necessarily of going back, you know, to a job to try to get more experience. You know what I'm saying? For the next time that you go out there and try to start your own business, yeah. Because a, a lot of people just in so much fear of just starting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh. So man, that, that's powerful though that you, you know that you shared that part of your story. You know, because because a lot of people just show the glamour part of it or just tell the glamour part of it like it's yeah. all good. Oh no. You know what I'm saying? Um. Uh, because yeah. because because a lot of times it's not that easy. Yeah. Um. But I will like to ask um, when you got slow. Yeah. Um, what, what, uh, what, what, what you think you wasn't doing right, uh, uh, just far as the marketing part of it, or, or, or uh, why wasn't why wasn't well, the uh, the phone ringing like it should? So be? here's the thing. Okay, so it wasn't that I wasn't doing anything right. It was just that, right. see, when you're doing commercial work. Shout out to Thomas B, man, for the super chat. Uh, go well, ahead, man. I'll cut you off. No, it's okay. Yeah, so it's not that I wasn't doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that when you're doing commercial work and you have, like, 50 people that you having to keep paying, you are actually bidding on jobs for the next, like, six months. So, so you had a crew. So you had a crew. Also, you just weren't doing it on your own. No, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm just giving you an example. On, okay. Yeah. Then I'm, a, I'm gonna bring in my aspect from a okay. personal standpoint. So, when you have a, like a large company, so you estimate jobs that's gonna be for the next six months to a year. So when your slow period do come, you have somewhere to send those guys, even though you don't have a lot of jobs going. You have somewhere to to send them. Now you may not make a lot of profit on that job. Because um, you sending out on guys over there, it's gonna eat the profit up on the job. But you're still gonna be able to uh, uh, have them. You're gonna still once the slow period ends, you're gonna be able to take them off the job, and it's gonna ramp back up. Now, for someone that's like me, uh, an individual contractor that's not as big, uh, I had to. For me, this is just what I think. Mm -hmm. I had to diversify. That's why I started doing HBAC. Now, my cousin, uh, he's been doing HVAC. Uh, some, of the, some, of the, some of the videos I got my cousin in, he's been doing HVAC. He's, he's one year older than me. So he's been doing HVAC like 15 years. You know, I've yeah, been I doing y'all do an install together on one yeah, of the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, he's sharp. Maybe like last week we did a, a five ton rooftop unit where we had to run a crane and all that stuff, you know? So, but anyway, uh, so that's when I, so from my standpoint, I had to di diversify because. What I did not want to do is I didn't want to take a risk of bidding on jobs and getting a lot of stuff on credit and getting like uh, lines of credit from the bank. Now I'm stuck having to uh, kind of be worried that I can't pay it back. Or I can't sleep at night. I don't want to do my business like that. You know, um, I, I got friends like my neighbor. He's an irrigation uh, contractor and landscaping where he does like irrigation for schools and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He does over two million dollars a year. Right. And I asked him, uh, and he says, "Man, I I'm making I'm actually making less money, even though I have like 30 guys." He said, "I'm making less money." He said, "You probably make more money than me." He said, "Because my guys, I don't lay my guys off in the winter. I pay them through the winter, even though they don't work." He said, "Because it's not too much landscaping and irrigation that you can do in the winter." So what I'm what I'm so the point I'm trying to make is that um, 
that's when I realized that I had to diversify. And since I had electrical background, uh, when I went to the HVAC school, they said, man, it's going to take you like a year. I say no more than a year to pick up uh, AC because they said 75 percent of my calls will be electrical related in the HVAC field. They say, sure, you have to do a new install or you'll have to, uh, uh, you know, recharge a unit. You know, he said, but they were like, most of the thing you have to be diagnosing is, is an incident electrical component and electrical component on the HVA system itself. They said, I give you one year and you're going to be pretty damn good at troubleshooting HVAC jobs. So anyway, so that's how, when I knew that I had to, since I didn't want to have to, I didn't want to have to try and create so much debt for myself to keep work coming in and doing bigger projects. Um, yeah. I, I feel it was best for me to do uh, another trade versus trying yeah. to yeah. And that's the thing. That's another thing why I love HBAC so much too, man. Because really, on the you know on on, on the um, in the fall or or the uh, slow season, what the, so uh, so uh, some people so called call it. But that's yeah. where we gotta uh, step up, and that's when you get your maintenance programs and stuff uh, together, so you can kind of keep busy all year round. And that because that's the one thing with like electrical, your electrical contractor also is like, man, how do it? Even with plumbing, you know what I'm saying? There's really no uh, package that you can sell them as far as maintenance, you know what I'm saying? But in HVAC, you can, and, and that'll kind of help you, uh, you know, all year round. Even for plumbing, maybe you can go and uh, get the sediment out the bottom of a water heater or something like that. But I just don't know, really, really far as plumbing, plumbers, the only time that they, uh, you know, really get called out is something gets stopped up or break down or start leaking or something like that. But HVAC, it does give you the opportunity, man, you know, to, to uh, sell maintenance agreement. You can do service and install, and it will pretty much keep you busy all year round, especially if you're, you know, just a contractor yourself. You know what I'm saying? I, man, <clears throat> I save phone numbers and emails. If I ever get slow, hey, it's time for you to do a maintenance. You know what I'm saying? Because I do build a good relationship with my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I ever, that's why I say I'm never really, I like when it does uh, do slow down. That, that'll give me a time to work on the business part of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, but no, go ahead, man. So, uh, so you got into, uh, HBAC. So how long you been doing, doing that now? When, when did you, uh, when did you, uh, uh, graduate your school? So, uh, actually the school I did, it, it was last summer. So that's what I went through the program last summer. It was actually just a, and my cousin was like, He'll tell you, man, I kept trying to get in the HVAC. My cousin, he would not, he was discouraging me like all the time, man. You know, oh, HVAC, you got to know how to do this, got to do that. And I would actually ask him, hey, what you think about this school? Because um, even though I did the school last year, I was going to do it the summer before. But it's like I was kind of waiting on him to give me his feedback on this school, you know, and, uh, because it's, it's only a 12 week course. It's a 12 week mm -hmm. course. And uh, so, he was like, man, you know, he really just wanted me to stay in my lane, you know. But now he's doing his own business now. He just went out on his own uh, uh, this year. Mm -hmm. Actually, just like a few months ago. So mm -hmm. now he's like, man, I'm glad you did it because, like, you know, we're able to do some uh, projects together. together. Mm -hmm. And so um, I forgot. What was the question? I'm sorry. Oh, just just far as when you graduated uh, HBAC oh, yeah. and, and kind of like uh, you know where, where, where you are where you are at, uh, with it now. Yeah, so like right now, man, I'm, I'm still learning most definitely, uh, but it's but you know the, the, the funny part is that man, when I went to the school, I had no idea that how the HVAC system. Where I would have never imagined that it goes from hot to cold. That you're taking a compressed gas, changing the temperature, and that's how you get your that's how you. Uh, it goes from hot to cold. I never would imagine. And you're using a compressor to pump it up, to refrigerate it up. Yeah, that, I never would imagine that. That's what that's what your cousin was telling you. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot more to it than what uh, you know <laughs> what you think. You know what I'm saying? It, it man, is. Bro, but it was, man, man, it was. I felt like I felt a, a great sense of gratitude just going back to school, man, because you know, mm -hmm. I had been out of school for for a while. You know what I'm saying? Like the last time I was in class was when I took a prep course to get my master license. So I ain't been in class since 2014. Yeah. And I just went back to school. That was what 2021 to do HVAC. But it was what, like, man. About how many people was in your class? Uh so in my class, it may have been 
like 30, 35 guys? About 30, 35 guys. And I guarantee you, man, no, so no, if no, anybody no. out there, if anybody out there uh, 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 listening in, uh, uh, just thinking about getting the HVAC, if he had 35 guys in his class, I guarantee you on the maybe about five guys that's uh, actually doing HVAC right now out of those 30 people in his class. I guarantee you. It's a number game. I just know know how it is. And uh, he takes the initiative to, to go take that class himself uh, to try to expand his company. So I know that he was in that class listening and, and really want to uh, uh, sponge and all the material that he can get in, uh, you know, uh, get himself as far as because he wanted to be, you know, he wanted to take his company to the next level. Yeah. But I get, but but uh, by me saying that, how, how many people uh, that you think uh, still doing HVAC to this day? Oh man, it's like exactly what you said. Yeah. Because um, you got, you know, being in the trade is like being a super person, man. Because it makes you a hard individual, like to the elements. It ain't just no little like cakewalk, you know, it makes you physically fit. It makes you mentally fit. I mean, you got to deal with people when it's hot. I mean, you may not want to, you know what I'm saying? It ain't just no little McDonald type job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's some of this stuff that'll just make you walk off and like, I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> I, I, uh, with that being said, uh, if you don't mind, let's get, uh, agent in too, man. Agent, uh, you, you took a class. Uh, uh, did you take a class or, or you was, uh, did you take a class yet? Or you, are you still, uh, I think you got with a guy. I think that was three got with a guy um, uh, that he was kind of mentoring with. Or, or did you take a class, Agent? Yeah. So I actually went through yeah a, a diploma program at my local tech yeah, that's school. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah. So I actually actually went that route, and then uh, like like uh, I think the last time I was on your your live stream, I was just telling people um, you know the, my journey was uh, of course I took the classes, uh, got finished, and, and got a diploma. Uh, I actually started working with a guy for uh, a few months and just listening to your, 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 or watching some of your videos and, and listening to some of the stuff you were saying, I was thinking, you know, I should probably go ahead and at least try and get my contractor license. So, mm -hmm. and kind of like the young, young, young guy was just saying, I, I actually, I took a prep course for the, for the contractor's license test, which, you know, it, to, I feel like it, it actually, you know, it, it that was the only reason why I passed. It wasn't because I because I hadn't been in the field long enough to know all the ins and outs, you know. And it's not really, of course, you know, the contractor's test itself is not really based on experience. It's more, you know, uh, codes and, and regulations and, and, and all that stuff. And you got to be able to find it. But anyways, so the prep class really, really helped me out. But um, so after, after say, after um, just getting done with school, from getting done with school, um, I had my contractor's license in probably, man, a year and a half. Um, but but so before I actually took my contractor's license test, I, so I finished school. I also went and got my NATE certification for uh, heat pumps, installation, uh, maintenance, and uh, air condition and furnaces. So I had a few extra little little things with me. So when I went to uh, apply to uh, take the contractor's license test, because I didn't have a year uh experience under a licensed contractor at least that's the requirements in south carolina um i had to go before a board and i just presented the board with all that information and all those certificates that i had and they allowed me to take the test and again with help from the prep course is, is how i passed man and so yeah i'm out here on my own right now uh, and, and and still at this point i'm i'm just really part-time i still have a full-time job right now um so my plan was to really just uh, you know, get my contractor's license, start the business, um, uh, you know, and kind of slowly bring my son along, get him trained up, you know, and then and then try and expand, you know. But but I have a I have a to be honest, man, I have a really really um, decent full time job. That right. pays, how pays how old your son is now? Uh, so he's twenty six. Yeah, twenty six. Yeah, yeah, twenty six. Okay. So. Yeah, so I'm working with him right now. We'll try and get him to where he could do some maintenances and stuff. And then, you know, um, I mean, to be honest, man, I'm, I'm actually turning down work right now. So, oh, yeah. So, yes, sir. Uh, are you doing any kind of marketing? What kind of marketing are you doing if, if you are? You know, um, so at this point, I'm not. I was doing marketing on Google, 
Google Ads, uh, Facebook. Are you doing right. word of mouth? Word of mouth, mostly. And when yes, I say marketing, and uh, word of mouth is a part of marketing in my book. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So, so yeah, but uh, yeah, so I'm just I mainly uh, accepting jobs that I can work on the weekends. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is my free days, so I kind of dedicate you know those days for HVAC work. And uh, but but as far as you know, contractor license and all that stuff, uh, man. I, I, I love the field. I mean, I'm I, again. I hadn't been in it for a long time, but I could see the potential uh, right. of you know being able to make a lot of money. So, yeah. But anyway, but yeah. So so that's really just my story. But I want to listen to the young young man uh, a little more, man. He's he's uh, yeah. His his story is kind of I'm interested yeah. in his story, but yeah. Know. So so um, so Tracy. Yeah. So you uh. So you pretty much started your YouTube channel how long ago? When have have you uh did you start your YouTube channel when you uh before you did the HVAC or you started electrical first? No, and then, uh, no, I just started the channel. Well, okay, man, I had the channel. I think I don't know if it was before I did the school or after, but um, I hadn't been, man. I don't even. I can go back and look at some of the videos when I when I yeah, because I, I see on your latest video. Uh, well, I don't know if that was your latest one, but I seen yeah. one where you where you start. Cause I see you got a whiteboard behind you. You were doing some uh, electrical oh. drawing and stuff like that. Okay. You going? Yeah. Are you going to do more of that? Uh, especially. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I did. So I'm looking at my thing right now. So it's been like one year, almost like exactly. Mm-hmm. Like one year. Yeah, it's been like one year exactly. That I've been on YouTube. You know. Okay. But, so you, uh, so you only been on there a year. Okay, yeah, but, but, I, but you're doing I, good. You're doing good, man. I, I, I recommend anybody to uh to subscribe to your channel. So, are, are you? What direction are you going for? Just for your channel, are, are you? Uh, man. Are you going to be talking about more of the business part? Are you? Are you going to uh, troubleshooting or so, uh, how to get into right. it? Because I, I think on one of your first videos, you kind of show, shared your story. Uh, have you? Uh, how you got into the uh, both of the trades, pretty much, and how you started your own business and took that leap of faith and started out on your own. So. At this moment, I, I always uh, wanted to teach. I always wanted to teach, especially electrical, because I grew up in an all-black community, so they took the trades out. Like I was lucky that I had trades. Uh, I had a few trades in my uh, last few years of high school, but after that, they took the trades completely out of school. So, yeah. And I was lucky my shop teacher, he taught me welding. It wasn't even, it wasn't even a welding class, but he, mm-hmm. he taught me welding anyway. I was fixing the, the school chairs. I was fixing the school table. So, like. Yeah, they, they, they took shop out of all high school when I was in school, man. I think I was yeah. in ninth grade, and then they just took shop out. I think I took, like, a a, a carpentry uh, trade, yeah. and then after that, man, they took it out. So, yeah. did. And so, um, uh, Yeah. So, man, I always wanted to teach. And years ago, man, I, I've always had this idea in my mind that I want to teach. And I've been trying to get with some, a few other electrical guys that, you know, that I know. But they don't want to, they don't have a passion to, like, like do a school or mm-hmm. try and, like, teach the younger generation. I'm still young myself, but, like, 18, 19, coming out of high school, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they don't want to do that, you know. So I have, like, a... So at this point in my life, I was just actually thinking about this this morning, that at this point now with my channel, I have a lot of install videos on there, but my channel was never really going to be an install. I never was, was planning to do installs on my channel. Mm-hmm. It was only supposed to be for like stuff I'm doing like right now, like stuff that I learned in actual industrial apprenticeship school. That's what I really wanted this channel to be, was just stuff that was that I learned in books, more book stuff, you know? So... At this point, I'm kind of not necessarily transitioning, but I'm going to be doing a lot more of the theory stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, because I, I think that's a good idea, man. Yeah. And so um, uh, I have a few people that I've been talking to. Is like I have a friend that's in Chicago. They made a, uh, they came up with their own uh, union, you know, it's a, their own black union. And so uh, were they actually bidding on government projects and getting government, winning bids. So now, uh, I'm trying to do because he asked me. He said, "Do you do you do um do you do any classes?" And I said, "Man, I haven't started doing classes." You know what I'm saying? So 
this was just like a two, two weeks ago when we had the conversation. And so now I'm like, I got to start making uh, videos on, um, I got to start making videos on uh, theory, you know, and the stuff I learned in my apprenticeship. Because that was my, that was my, that was my, that was always been my goal to do a, a tradesman school. It's always been my goal to do a tradesman school. Not just electrical, but it's always been my goal to do just like construction, do all, all facets of construction, you know, because, and I, I don't want to, I, I hate to kind of segue, but I had a, I had the pleasure of reading the book. Uh, it's, it's by uh, Booker T. Washington. It's called Up From Slavery. Yeah, I mean, that's, hey, that's funny. That's funny you said that because on my last, what to call my last yeah. live stream, I recommend uh, the Negro in Business by Booker T. Washington. Okay, that's, you know that's my kinfolk. You know what I'm saying? My last name Washington. You know what I'm saying? But but he big, <laughs> on, he, yeah, he big on the trades, man. But I do recommend you getting that book too, bro. Hey, the Negro in Business, man. I'm yeah. reading it right now. I'm probably about the third chapter, or something like that. Okay, I'm but check uh, it out. yeah, check check that one out too. But uh, yeah, I'm familiar with the one up from slavery too. But go ahead, I ain't mean. So, to but in that book, he talked about in that book he talked about uh like how uh they had they were doing they they were doing the trades at the schools, you know? And so that inspired me. I was like, man, this was like, man, I was like 21 when I read that book. And it, that just kind of compelled me to just like, I wanted to do that. You know what I'm saying? I really wanted to do that. So now I'm at this point to where I'm just trying to bring like what I can to right here. And also to like, uh, you know, like-minded individuals so we can brainstorm basically you know because of course it takes money it takes finances economics yeah. to do this type of stuff you know so at this point for the channel i'm going to be doing more stuff like this uh because when i do start taking in like I, I got invited to come out to a school out in fort worth about a month ago but i hadn't i haven't made it out there yet and they want me to talk to the, the high school students you know so um i'm just kind of trying to get more of my uh the theory stuff yeah man i encourage you to go that route man and just be consistent and over time man you got potential you know to easily you can get a hundred thousand two hundred thousand subscribers on it because you know that's a trade true enough you might be doing it for free but you might be getting sponsors and everything you know what I'm saying you can get sponsors to sponsor your channel you know what I'm saying so just just keep it up and just, just, just try to be consistent if, if yeah. you don't drop a, you know at least one, you know once or twice a week you know what I'm saying yeah. and then eventually you know it's going to grow um cuz I think on like education videos like you talking about it for some reason they be a, a uh they be it seems like it be a little slower sometimes for for people to subscribe it seems like they 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 do like more hands on in the field troubleshooting for some right. reason yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah, because when I try to do uh, videos on schematics and stuff like that, you know, you'll get your viewers. But if you was actually out there showing you, and you probably can uh, bounce for this on your channel too. When you actually in the field, those videos do a lot better than the ones that at a whiteboard for some reason. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, but if you, but if you do uh, stay consistent in what you're doing, I think the viewers are coming, man. You can you can grow that channel to a lot, man, because you got a lot of knowledge. You know what I'm saying, and you explain it well. You know what I'm saying? Even in this video uh, like this, uh, when you actually bring the, con the uh, contactor at the whiteboard and you're showing them actually what a terminal's uh, at, you're explaining it in, 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 in a comprehensive way that all of us can understand. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, yeah. and that's lacking in this industry. You know what I'm saying? So I salute you, man. And, you know, just keep on going and, and, and just please stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? And I think, man, sky's the limit for your channel yeah <laughs> thank you man it's a yeah it's, it's an honor to be on your platform man i'm just you know it's, it's an honor now for, sure, now for sure man now I, I like what you're doing man but if any, anything i can do you know try to you know to help out hey i'm, I'm here you know what i'm saying but uh I mean, I'm a fan perfect. too i want to learn about more uh lectures and stuff myself so i want to see more of those videos myself yes, like i say I, i'm there i'm a subscriber so Yeah, man. Anything else uh, you want to add? Oh man, hey man, I'm having a good time. I'm, a, I'm in. I'm having a good time right now. So I mean, it's it's. I can. It's whatever. I can. Yeah, I, I'm gonna see if uh, hey, if y'all leave in the comments, see if y'all got any questions for uh, either Adrian or uh, United Trades Academy. You know, I can I can say this that um, uh, I'm gonna 
Amos, Amos say uh, HBAC got him rich. <laughs> let, me, let me take you down, man, for you, uh, before uh, you two give me a copyright. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. give me a copyright strike for showing your content. Let me see. But 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 now nah, man, you're doing good, man. Just you know, keep look, it up. So I can say this right here. So, all right. So my brother-in-law, so my my wife's sister, uh, when they got married about what five or six years ago, uh, he got into the electrical trade. So he's an electrician too. He's uh, studying for his German German electrician license. So with the time, man, and dedication, I mean, he, he's supporting his family. You know doing it and, uh, and he so he's he's working in the he's doing commercial work right now and on the weekend he does solar install he's installing solar you know so um it's not just all about just going to people houses and troubleshooting outlets and you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying going to commercial buildings and you know troubleshooting this troubleshooting that you know like I mean you can you can take with the electrical background you can go work for Tesla you can work for NASA you know wow. it all depends on what they need at that time you know and so and, and man, I just had a call from my other cousin. Mm -hmm. He has a degree, like, like a few degrees anyway. So he's working for Amazon, like a big, kind of like almost an executive type, but he's up there, you know, here in Dallas. He called me and he said, Well, they land off, so I need to get a trade. Can you what do I need to do uh to get a to get become an electrician or something, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm about to get laid off, you know. And he had kind of like a his position, his was position with the company was like, you know. Yeah, I think that was I think that was in the news uh, uh a couple was. weeks ago. They they laying out a lot a lot of people in Amazon. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So he called me <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just like, wow. So anyway, long story short, he's like, Man, I need to get a trade because trades, where is that, man? Uh and see. What's so funny about that uh, situation is that his grandfather was telling him back when he first went to school, he said, we need to talk to Stephen before you make a decision on going to college. He said, because Stephen, he got a trade. You need, to, you need to maybe look at that. But see, his family was pushing him to do like the college type, uh, you know, you know, whatever they call that, white collar or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And so he went that route and like most of my me and my family, they are reverting back to the trades because those white, I mean, the the, the, the jobs, uh, those, I guess you call them white collar jobs, mm -hmm. they like kind of phasing out or they can't afford to pay you or they got AI now for that job. Yep. So, I mean, so man, now, I always recommend, man, get in a trade, man. Uh, I yeah. was always taught, man, hey, you need to get you a skill. That was my phone used to call it back in the day. Hey, man, you need to get you a skill. So if anybody listen to this and they thinking about getting in one of the trades and, 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 and if uh, your family still wants you to do academic, really to get certified for a trade may not take them about two years. I still think you should, maybe if you, if you want to uh, get an academic, you can still do a trade on the side or, um, or maybe just get the skill first. You know what I'm saying? Maybe take it like a, a, a year or two college, um, Maybe in, you, if you're 18 or 19 in high school, try to learn a trade, you know what I'm saying, to get qualified for it so you can have that for a backup plan. And if mama wants you to go to uh, school, you know what I'm saying, and, and, you know, graduate, get a bachelor's degree or something like that, um, you know, because sometimes, uh, especially not in the black community, though, man, it, it's, 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 it's rare that family's saving enough for their kids to go to school you know what i'm saying uh, what they call like a fold one b or something like that yeah that, that's rare you know what i'm saying now if, if your family do got money put to the side for you to go to school then go to school but man taking all this debt de uh debt out you know what i'm saying to get these jobs you know what i'm saying there's not really going to be guaranteed in the future anything like that you know what i'm saying maybe unless, unless you're in programming or something like that man but you really like you say, with your cousin, y'all yeah, really need to take your time and decide because a lot of the skilled trades, man, going to be here. You know what I'm saying? They're always going to be toilets need to be flushed and unplugged. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to be a plumber, even even appliance, a lot of people sleep on appliance repair, man. You know what I'm saying? 
and the plans prepared right now is like a sleeping giant just far you still don't need to be certified you still don't need to work for a company so many years before you can uh get your uh you get a contractor license you know what i'm saying like right now in hbac you got to work for a company for a few years before you get your contract license right, right now in the plans repair you don't need to do that like when i pre uh preach for warranty companies and stuff like that you know what i'm saying start off if you want to open you a business and get with a warranty company you can sign up for any of the warranty companies right now and you don't need a trade if you're working on appliance and that's dryers dishwasher garbage disposals uh um uh, whatever you know all the other plans you can sign up for one to come right now all you all you really need to create an llc and have some insurance the minimum insurance requirement you can start your business right there right. you know what i'm saying and, but then you just got to go to whatever trainings you need with their youtube universe or whatever learn how to work on them you know what i'm saying but uh man don't, don't sleep on uh the trades out here you know what i'm saying but I, I i do recommend if there's any kind of way you can put that in your back pocket and then go to school you know for your degree or whatever you know what i'm saying but if you can just uh you know get that trade because you parking uh they have uh hbac class at nighttime yeah. you know if you really want it you know what i'm saying you can be going to school still and still taking that little uh hbac class you know at night you know what i'm saying so you'll have that you know for for a fallback on when these big companies like fedex and amazon had these big layoffs you know you can still go out there and you know provide for your family and i, I was going to say too with my cousin he, he had those degrees and i suggested to him that since you got them degrees i said man it'd be easier for you to make a transition into like a construction uh management type position versus just trying to be like a hands-on skilled laborer i said you may just be one or two courses away from being like in the office doing like a project management type role versus like you know starting over and you got tools and you, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's it'll be real easy for them just to make a transition into like a construction management type, project management type position with his, all of his um, his degrees and classes that he has, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, because that's what his, that's what his uh, management stuff was with, with Amazon. He was in management, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. But, yeah. And and that's a, no, that's a good idea, man. It, it, and if somebody do have that type of experience, you you still gotta transition that when, when you do interviews. If you want to get in one of the trades and thing, now you want to take what you have. You you're not gonna start from the bottom. I expect you to start from the bottom just because you don't know you know ten to fifteen dollars an hour or something like that. Now you take what you have and, and try to utilize into the trade. You know, because like I say, you, you know, I think we we were speaking earlier as far as. Uh, I think that was me and Ken uh, on the last screen, but there's so many different things that you can do in the trade, you know, just yeah. like you mentioned also. And not yeah. all just by hands on. Yeah. yeah. I think. Uh, uh, hey, so can, can you read? Can you read what's on the screen? Uh, yeah, HB yeah. Woman got a question for you. Uh -huh. I can read it to you. I see it. I see it. Uh, she said she's taking a prep course in my local community college. So, what I would suggest is. Uh, uh, this is for your journeyman. This is for uh, which one is this? N A C or the master electrician license. Well, Whatever anyway, the N A N E C exam is, I'm not sure. That might maybe okay, yeah, electrician. Okay, that's, that's, that's for to get the journeyman or your master. I'm not, I'm not sure which one they're trying to do. But what I was going to say is that uh, I would I wish I can ask her or him a question because see. I was fortunate when I took my prep course that the guy that was given the prep that they gave my prep course, he had the second highest score in Texas for any master electrician. So I don't know uh, what teacher is teaching that course because uh, sometimes with those colleges, they just have people in there to kind of just to fill a space mm -hmm. and they may not necessarily can explain it to you from a trade standpoint and a theory standpoint so that's what i needed at that time because he hit that the guy he, he had his own company too so he had been running his own company for 20 years and he taught at the school he was my first year teacher matter of fact he was my first year teacher so I was like I said, I was I was blessed to have him as my teacher. But anyway, just to, to say this too, 
Um, whatever information that you get, if you have, we had, so we had homework every week that we would have to do. It was like 50 questions. Now, I would, <laughs> this is how adamant I was by passing that test the first time. That's how I passed my master electrician exam the first on the first try. I would wake up in the morning. I would study like 30 minutes. So I was getting up at the time when I was working for somebody, I was getting up maybe around like five. So I would get up at four, four thirty now just to study 30 minutes before I went to work. Then at the time I was working at, I was working night shift. So this is what I was doing working night shift. So then on my lunch break, I would study for my entire lunch break. Now I would come back home and study for like 30 more minutes. So, uh, but if you, if you calculate up, calculate, calculate that up from Monday to Friday, you've got a pretty good amount of study time in just on that, on that information. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, so like I said, this was a eight week course. So I did this for eight weeks. Uh, that's, that was my study schedule. And I let my wife know that this is my schedule for like, you know, these, these few months, you know, I have to absolutely do this. So, um, anyway, once I did that course, the eight week course now, I did the course again, the same eight week course, the same homework. I took the course one more time. So I had 16 weeks of that same information, that same schedule. So, cause I you had to pay, you had to pay for it the second time. Yeah. Yeah. It was every Saturday. It was every Saturday from like, uh, I think eight to 12. Yeah. Every Saturday, like eight to 12. I did that for 16 weeks. So you want it bad. You ain't just kind of want it. Bro, when I tell you that they were not look, I've been, bro, I got a lot of chips on my shoulders, man. Like when I tell you how I told you, like they try to put me in special ed, that's why my children are homeschooled. There was a chip on my shoulder. I absolutely had to do that. And when it came to my getting my license, as far as to start my business, I had to do that because they would not give me my just do. Like, man, I was like, tell you, like, I don't know if you ever heard of this thing called Six Sigma. I'm just giving you the example, right? There's this program called Six Sigma that big billion dollar corporations use. It's, you know, it's a system, a program, computer program. You enter in your uh, your data from your company, and it'll let you know where you make where you need to make improvements. So back in 2014, I was already researching things that need that I needed to make my business successful. So we had a safety meeting one day. I just had to say this. We had a safety meeting one day. It was maybe like how many electricians? Maybe like. At that time, we had it was like three actual electrician companies out there because the project was so big. So I'm gonna say maybe roughly 200 to 250 electricians in this big safety meeting, job site safety meeting. The safety guy asked the question, "Do it? Does anybody in here know what Six Sigma is?" Guess who raised his hand? This little young looking boy, and I got up and explained what Six Sigma was. So when I tell, so when I tell you that, yeah, I want, I had to pass this test because. Working for those companies, man, I was dying, man. Like I was, I wasn't like physically dying, but I was mentally like I was, I was dying because I wasn't my, because what God had gave me uh, spiritually, like it was not being fulfilled. So now when I'm teaching, now I'm getting my fulfillment back. So mm. make a long story short, you know, I don't want to go too long to make it long story short. Yeah, I absolutely had to do that. To pass my test. Well, that's what I felt like I had to do. I probably could have passed it just doing the one time, the AP course, the one time, but I absolutely had to pass that test. So um when I tell you that like there's all one thing that you can control is how much you study. That's the only thing that you can control because they only give you three minutes to answer the questions. They only give you three minutes. They say if you if you if you can't answer the question within three minutes, you're not gonna finish the test in time. Mm -hmm. So doing all those long calculations, you know, I mean, you gotta be able to be able to do it within three minutes. So that's why I said I took the course twice. So now when I went in there, when I finished the test, I still had 30 minutes left. So they let you know that I was pretty dang prepared yeah. if I finished it. Yeah, the you test. was on it. I still had 30 minutes left that I, you know what I'm saying? This is the master electrician exam. So when you ask me what did I, if I have any more, uh, if I have any uh, things that you could do to, uh, for your preparation, mm -hmm. take it serious and just, you 
and put the time in. And if you don't feel that you're ready, don't go in there and take the test. If you don't feel that you're ready, don't go in there and take the test. Because I'm because um you wanna you wanna try and do it when you the first time, you know, or the next time you take it again. You know, so um and one thing I did too was that I got a lot of I had maybe like three different practice tests. So I had a practice test that my instructor gave me. Then I got the other practice test off offline, just different places, you know, just so. Uh oh, hold on one second. I'm sorry. My, my, nah, you're uh, good. my camera light got hot. <laughs> so you good? We still hear you though. Okay. So um, let me turn this light on right here. So can you see? Hold on. Did my oh you know what? Okay, that's it right there. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I um where was I at? I forgot where I was at. My light kind of cut me off what No, you you good, you're saying this far as effective preparation. Yeah, uh just so um that's pretty much what I can say. If you're the only person that can control how much yeah, how much you study. So I, I think this huh? No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's how I was gonna say. I'm gonna try to fix this light. Okay. Cause uh I think Thomas B was also uh earlier we were speaking on uh this far as your channel, but he was saying it'd be uh this far combining theory and the hands-on would be you know some nice videos. And uh, what you think about that? Because I, I, I agree with that also, just far as, um, you know, how you be doing the whiteboard? Yeah. And maybe that's what he's talking about. Uh, uh, so, just say if you had a, some doing some troubleshooting, hands-on in the field, and you uh, come back and kind of combine that with the whiteboard. Oh. You, you, you know, just this far as uh, editing edit, edit the video. You actually saying, you, he, they actually saying for my video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we were speaking. Okay. Yeah, we were speaking. Okay. Though, you saying you, you like to teach in this far as the theory and, and uh, expert uh, explaining. So he he was he yeah. was just trying, uh, this, sound like he's saying you know hands on and theory at the same time. Yeah, that's that's what I'm uh uh like the last video I did. I just so with being an electrician, we got to bend pipe. We got to install pipe. So mm -hmm. um. Okay, so that was yeah, that was your latest, latest video. I seen a uh, pipe bend up in there. Yeah, that was just the conduit. I was, I was just I was just giving a brief introduction. Mm -hmm. Uh, what the bender is for, the measurements on the bender, all that stuff. So now yeah. my next video, That's I'm gonna do, on. I'm gonna be uh showing how to bend pipe. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know how to measure and then how to bend the pipe and you know that things of that sort. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna actually so combine the theory and the hands on. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So, so. Um, uh, you and you were saying with your other company, you was you was the only black uh that that was working at the uh at the company that that you that you was at. And read, uh, hold on one second. Say, say, say that one more time. You say you you was the only black guy uh working at the plant that you that you was at. And, we, and we, now the, the the first job that you had as far as electricity. When I was working with the when we was on the big government jobs. Yeah. So no. I was the only so no there were other electricians but they were older probably like around so when i was i was over there i was like in my late 20s so like 25 26 27. um so there were other older black men out there but they're like twice my age mm -hmm. they're like so, you know, in their that's kind of that's kind of why i was going going there because i'm trying to uh this see as far as the electrician field and the hvac field because i know as far as H HVAC, it's kind of different uh, in Houston, um, but we still a minority. Uh, I was speaking to a guy from Green Greenwood, Mississippi, and he had to move to Memphis because he definitely we definitely a minority in uh, in, in uh, Mississippi. But I'm just trying to see how because you in Texas where I'm at, I'm just trying to see if the electrician the trade. Uh, it, it's it's getting the same uh, uh not really you don't see a lot of us in in the trade especially young black men so i'm trying yeah. to see if that's across the board or, or is that only hbac because uh no. any class that i go to is maybe about 
two two blacks in there and the rest of them either white or hispanic yeah um uh, especially especially in um uh, in texas I, I see um it was mostly uh hispanics and whites you know okay. what i'm saying so it so not only in the classroom if i'm going for extra training i'm a, i'm the only one up in there a lot of times i see this over and over again if i go out of state to a training it's only maybe one or two and it's eight by 18 whites and five uh hispanics uh and, and i'm just saying this over and over again in hvac trade so yeah. not only uh uh in the classrooms so when i get to, actually to a job and working for a company this far as the trades in hvac uh and, and i can look around almost uh almost because i look at a lot of other companies also and i see who's in the trucks you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't see a lot of us. You know what I'm saying? It's mostly Hispanics and white. Uh, is that like that for uh, the electricians also? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> yeah. So, man. so man, that's why I say, man. So, like I say, when you say Booker T. Washington, man, I'm big on that, man. And some, some, some type of way, we have to get back into the trades, man. Because the trade, trades is where it's at. A lot of people look at look at the trades like it's dirty or something. I don't know what it is, man. Cause I know I know people used to look at plumbers like plumbers do dirt work and, and all that. You know what I'm saying? They uh, you look at plumber like okay, you see they butt crack. But man, they're, they're the ones that is debt free. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, uh, you know, really enjoying life, man. The ones that got the skill trades, man. But like like I say, even uh it seemed like even the older guys. They don't even try to get their kids, and, and I, I respect Asia man uh, trying to get his son, or at least introduce him to HBAC, and really up to them to take you know take it to that next level. But at least we need to in introduce our you know kids to the uh, the trades, man. You know, what I'm, saying? I'm talking about man and woman, man. Um, try to get more women in, into the trades, also. Hey, look, I can, man, look. The trades are so important that look check this out the trades are so important that after you become a man you need to find a shelter for your uh family and without those uh skills you cannot become a man right now you already have it easy to where you can go and get a apartment somewhere but in some countries you got to build your own damn house in some countries, the, the building process is long because you're building with concrete blocks. You're building with different type of material. So four months to eight months, a house go up this fast. You know, that's not really the practice of how it used to be. You know, Black Wall Street, y'all, we was building our own stuff. Men were men. Men and, and since, Yeah, and, and since you say men, men, man, man, uh, I want to be optimistic. But I think it's going to get worse, man. Just far as what I see on TV, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I can say I, I ain't I ain't tripping on, you know, the LGBT community or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You is what you is. But that's all I see on TV these days. You know what I'm saying? So just far as, man, I don't know what this world uh, coming to, man. Like I said, we ain't really got to get, get into all that, man. But I think it's a plan attack, you know what I'm saying, to – uh it, it's probably been a work in progress anyway when, when i say people uh you know look down upon the trades like that dirty work and stuff like that yeah because man he the this, this generation behind us man it's gonna be soft man you know what i'm saying don't, a lot of them don't know how to change the door handle don't know how to uh dig a ditch you know what i'm saying ain't never seen a shovel never put their foot on the shovel never dug dug, dug a trench you know what i'm saying uh like i say man i, I used to be i used uh big rough ends we didn't have when we did rough ends when we, when we building the house from the ground up just far as doing the plumbing work we ain't had a little machine that you rent at home depot you know what i'm saying we actually had to dig and lay the pipe down or whatever you know what i'm saying so man uh like i said i want to be optimistic man that's what my channel about too try to get more people in the trades and i really do mean share share it with somebody even if you don't uh don't think they want to uh see it man just share it anyway you know what i'm saying y'all know some of these youngsters out here man that ain't that ain't you know what i'm saying going in the right direction man y'all not even uh 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 what y'all want to go to college you know what i'm saying and what's college man and then 
you you know college three or four years and the, the system's so messed up you know what i'm saying it's gonna be hard for them to finish college you know what i'm saying especially when you go to uh certain colleges then you uh unless you got a different strong mind state you know what i'm saying you're going to you're going to all the uh after school activities the clubs and stuff like this Man, it's probably a, a hard trying to maneuver trying to uh, graduate college, especially especially four years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, especially to, uh, uh, access to the internet. Um, so, man, we got to be careful, man, and, and, and really try to get people back into the trades, man. And, and uh, that's why I don't mind, uh, you know, showing nice things, man. Showing, 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 showing that you can uh, 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 show them your nice house and your nice cars that pay for. You know what I'm saying? Debt free. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be no rapper, man. Uh, you ain't got to be selling no drugs out here, man. You can make an honest living, sleep good at night in one of these trades, man. And I promise you, man. And, and, and it's a lot better than sitting behind the desk in one of these cubicles. Uh, it's a lot more freedom, man. And, and, uh, e e even Because a lot of people, even engineering, you know what I'm saying? You going to school and taking out all this debt to be an engineer. But trust me. Unless you really uh, got a discipline, uh, discipline mind state, you know what I'm saying, to be a good engineer. Engineers not starting out for no eighty and a hundred thousand dollars a year. They, you know what I'm saying, they get laid off real quick. With that, a lot of engineers starting out forty and fifty thousand dollars, you can make that kind of money in one of these trades. You know. Right. You know, I, I was I was telling my uh, I was having this conversation with my wife that I was saying that you know I can't find like I won't say I can't find, but it's it's difficult to find young blacks that want to get into the trade because like um um now like hispanic or mexican they be throwing their sons at me you know to let them work with me and uh i was having this conversation with my wife that it's gonna it's gonna i don't want to be like negative but i was telling my wife it almost seems like the only way for People like us to get back into the trades is gonna be like a, a natural disaster because we're gonna be forced to rebuild our own community. Like, because see, and I have this issue. I was telling my wife this the other day because some of my people they'll say I'm gonna go to the Mexican because they cheaper. And then I, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I said when I said when it's a disaster, I said Julio is gonna be in his community helping these people rebuild. Their community. I said, the same person that said that my price is too high, call Julio when it's a disaster. He's not going to come and help you. Because he's going to be with his people, helping his people. And really, to get our youth off these streets from, and from game banging, you need to pay me more so I can pay them. That's the reason why we can't hire them because we want to do business with our people. But when you talk about your, your price is too high, well, I can't employ your son. I can't employ your nephew because you you want you want to pay me a twenty five dollar an hour wage. Anyway, I don't want to go too far on that. You know what I'm saying? But that's all I was gonna say. About no, that. no, I understand that, man. I, hey, I was just talking to my wife about that. Exactly what you're saying. It's the same thing. It's like the mom and pop store. Just say if you get a Walmart uh, in, in your local community. You know what I'm saying? True enough, that Walmart gonna be to say that uh, that same deodorant. Walmart probably paid. Two dollars for that deodorant, but the mom and pop had to pay four dollars for the deodorant. So true enough, Walmart can sell the deodorant for four dollars. You know what I'm saying? And the mom and pop got to sell it for six. They making the same profit. You know what I'm saying? But you got to support the small business. You got to support the small man for they stay, stay in business. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't sell it. You know, sell our serve the same way as the large companies are selling. They can they that same thing. Uh, I did example as far as the HVAC unit, man. But I know for a fact some of these larger corporations, these companies, man, getting HVAC units for like two hundred dollars for the whole complete system. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I ain't gonna say the whole complete system. Just say a, a evaporator core for two hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? They might get the condenser probably for uh, a two fifty. You know what I'm wow. saying? They'll get the furnace for like two hundred dollars. So it's still under a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? But on top of that, some, uh, you know, uh, they can chew, but they got a lot of overhead. You know what I'm saying? But they can they can choose to sell that equipment at a, at a lot lower price than I can. You know what I mean? Because that same piece of equipment, I might be paying $2,000 for. And they're getting it for, uh, you know, the whole complete system for $1,000. So why not? They can sell it for cheaper than me. 
but you know since they got these big large commercials though they selling it for a lot higher than i am you know but that's a whole nother conversation too you know what i'm saying and some people do think you know white ice is colder than uh <laughs> you know you know the saying yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? yeah so i was I, yeah i was yeah i was just telling my wife i don't know like uh because when your grandmother house her roof is gone and ain't nobody to come in to uh replace it you know what i'm saying like that like that um like the um uh the disaster they had in florida when the insurance company is running out of um running out of the out of the state because i don't want to pay the insurance on your grandmother's uh, home you're gonna be forced to rebuild that you're gonna be forced to pick up that hammer and put some nails put some boards together you're gonna be forced to because who else gonna come and do it so i would just tell my wife i don't know how that we're gonna get the youth in the trades but that's the only way i see it is a disaster and they're gonna be forced to, to help so since you said that though, that's kind of man how I got into XBAC. I mentioned it before. Uh Project mm -hmm. Rebuild. Uh I think we lost it. But project uh Okay. Maybe this your camera. But yeah, Project Rebuild, man, after Hurricane Katrina. You know what I'm saying? That's how I really got introduced to HBAC. They had a project rebuild. I signed up for really free education, you know. Uh unfortunately, by me being in Mississippi. They ain't really do me no good, you know what I'm saying? Cause like I say, you had to be a certain type to get an ace back job, you know. Um, but now nah, trade, nah, trade yeah, trade that that's the route to go, man. I'm trying to get back on. Yeah. What's up, Agent? What you think about the trades, man? What, what, what? Yeah. Um, I agree 100%. Uh, hold on, give me a second. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I agree uh, 100%. Um, so, uh, and it's, it's, here's some of the obvious things. If, if I'm sure your area is just like mine. You, you drive to the store or drive across town, and you'll see, you know, upwards of 100 plus brand new houses. And every one of those houses have HVAC units, right? They all have electrical service, uh, plumbing service. So, you know, all the skilled trades are definitely needed. Um, I'm not sure, you know, what I could do to kind of encourage people that I know to get into skill trades. But, um, hey, man, it, we, uh, I mean, we, we have to stop now again. I, so I still have a full time job. So I'm kind of you know, I'm, I'm speaking in terms of uh, uh, a small ind independent uh, contractor that's still working for a big corporation but uh and like and like i say hey but that's good man like i say mm -hmm. so um, I sal salute you know what i'm saying because that's yes, it what, what we what, what, so you still getting part-time uh revenue coming in from a skilled trade you know what i'm saying yes, sir. even yes, if sir. you want to continue to keep your full-time job to, until you retire that's cool you still make it honest money that, that could be your side money your little hustle money whatever you want to do your exactly. retirement fund, however you want to manage that, but you still getting that by the skill trade. So, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. So I mean, so you, hey, you, you, you can have that for example for somebody else. That's almost mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You can still go to school for a uh, rather, uh, rather uh, another academic, you know, bachelor's degree or whatever, and just have a trade on on the side for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and then, I mean, you can preach that to the youngsters too. Yeah. Right. Right. Continue that job, but learn to trade on the side, especially with the, uh, a lot of this online education, though. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, Trade Academy saying, hey, he he did it. He, he got up 30 minutes early because a lot of people are like, oh, I ain't got enough time. You know what I'm saying? Everybody mm -hmm. got the same 24 hours in the day. Now you got to make time. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Uh, you can pray. You can pray. Uh, to God, as long as you want to, actually, I don't add 26 hours in the day. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's going to happen, man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because the world has been spending the, the same cycle for the last however thousands of years. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't for to get extra time in the day. You got to make time. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir.
I, I just like to add uh, to the the lady that was asking uh, United Tradesmen about the NEC, which I, of course I don't have any electrical experience. That, that's something that I am interested in getting into um, at some point. But uh, as far as HVAC uh, contractors license or any contractors license test, I feel like, and I agree with with the young brother. Just uh, you know, study, be you know, take it. Take it, be serious about it, right? Um, put in some time studying. Uh, get to a point where you feel comfortable. You're ready to take the test. Taste, don't 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 be afraid to take it and fail because just because you take it and you fail the first time doesn't mean you know that's it. You have to wait for for whatever ten years. At least in the HVAC in my state, um, you could take it and, and fail. And and I think it was. Um, you don't have to hold me to it, but I think it was like 30 days you could take the test again or something to that effect. Maybe it was a little bit longer. But anyways, um, within the first year, you could take the test three times in one year. So I'm just saying don't be, a, you know, if you guys are looking looking um, or thinking about uh, taking a test, take it, you know, be prepared for for the test, but don't be afraid to fail because you can yeah, still be go back and take it. Yeah, don't be discouraged. This mm -hmm. is because you fail. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just try it again until you pass it. Right. The one one other thing I just want to say that there's a guy I can't think of the guy's name. He's on YouTube. I think he's out of Florida. Um, a, a guy that that was going for his HVAC contractor's license. I think this guy. I think he he attempted six or seven times something crazy like that. Finally got it. But I'm thinking if if that dude he is dead serious about HVAC. He's not just he. You know you know there's people that, that that's my that, boy Johnny. You talking about? Johnny, I think so. Yes, sir. There are people, there's people that won't change. Or there's people that 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 you know that talk about change, and there's people that that do stuff to change, you know, their situations. And that guy is one of them. But anyway, that's all I really got to say about that. Yeah, I'll salute. All right, hey. man. Yeah, yeah. Uh let me see. I think I got a couple more questions for you. Yes, sir. Somebody uh can you state your name? I know somebody mentioned what was the name of your channel. Oh yeah, it's United Tradesmen Academy. United Tradesmen Academy. I right, shout out to uh, JP HVAC man, you're live. What's up, man? What's up? What's going on, JP HVAC? Man, I just came to salute, man. You feel me? Salute to you, bro. Salute. I'm in here too, man. I just got in here, you know, in the field. So I'm just checking it out, having fun with it. How long you been in the field now? Uh, I finished school back in March, but um, I just got hired in August, and they gave me my truck by October, early okay. October. So, so you finished in March, and uh, you got a job in what? Uh, August. In August. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what What was the process of you getting the job? What uh? To be honest, would, would, would you trying would you trying to get it uh as soon as you got out or 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 uh or it took you a minute to get it or did you get did, uh, how many applications you put in before you got hired? To be honest, I was trying to get one before I graduated. To be honest, but um, For sure. to be honest, uh, my school they um they got a program, so they was like you know they they uh definitely submit applications all day for you. So I was just getting getting call after call like like uh hey. You got a job interview for you Tuesday. Hey, you got a job interview for you Thursday. So to be honest with you, my school did a lot of you know, a lot of heavy, heavy lifting and all okay, that. So uh, when you graduated, they continue to look for a job for you. Yep, definitely. Okay, yep. That's what's up. Because um, I, I I guess some with the accreditation, you know, they get some kind of incentive if they prove they stay they they uh students working in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But man, okay. you know, I just can't say, you know, salute. I definitely be watching you because I be in the field going through uh I'm having a problem with the uh low voltage sh shortage shortages. So, you know, that's what's beating me up. Yeah, now nah, now nah, you'll get it, man. Like I say, it's a learning curve. You ain't gonna get it overnight. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna eventually so, get it though. So, what what so, so what turned you into H back though? What 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 how how you uh, uh found out about it, how you even knew knew a thing of H back? I ain't gonna lie, um, you know, what made me start to like really want to get into it was I was just tired of working like UPS jobs and Walgreens type jobs. I'm like, man, this little 14 ain't nothing. So I just went on YouTube to be honest and I searched up, 
the best trades. And it was between HVAC, uh, electrician, and uh, welding. But I'm not no welder. I already knew welding. Like, they, they get money, but welding wasn't really going to be for me. So um, if, if, if my school would have offered an electrician, I'd have probably went that path. But um, I'm definitely... I'm 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 actually glad I went to you know this path though. Yeah, no, nah, it's basically where it's at. Shout out to uh United Trades Academy. <laughs> hey, but you see, yeah. hey, hey, look here though. We got United Trades Academy. Hey, look, he do both. So in the, even oh, in the, you do both? Yeah, so even in the future, if you're interested in uh electrician, man, they go a plug right there. He you know what I'm saying? He gonna yeah, uh, yeah, so you know, but, but uh ace back man. It's gonna keep As you busy. You do a little bit though. So, yeah, I yeah, mean, no, I, definitely. You, know, you do a little bit of electrician too. So you know what I'm saying? Uh HVAC can get you pretty much prepared, man, for all trades. If you know, if if, if you ever got burnt out or something like that, but it's so much you can do in HVAC, man. Sky's the limit. Oh man, for sure. You know, I'm uh I'm starting to have people like hit me up for like side side gears and all that. So I'm, I'm gonna start trying to get my feet wet with with, with that. So yeah. Oh, well, I say this, but but this 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 learn the trade first. You know what I'm saying before you yeah. really think about too much side work. You know what I'm saying that, that's so, gonna come. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. This, this, this learn yeah. it first, man. Just be patient. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Learn, learn as much as you can first. You know what I'm saying, and then you know what I'm saying branch out there. You know, eventually you gonna be doing your own thing. You know what I'm saying. Man, but, you know, like you know, and I'm. I'm also having fun with the money, you know. I ain't gonna get too much and all that, but boy, you know, I'm definitely I'm I'm 24, man. You know, this these the first. Oh yeah, this, man. This, this this the first time I didn't got you know commas yeah. on checks and all that. Yeah, <laughs> look 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 at man, look you just 24, bro. You only been in for a few months. That's why I say, man, enjoy the process, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, sure. Guys, man, look because uh 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 your brain is your bank account right now though so, you know what I'm Much, yeah. because whatever you learn can't nobody take it from you so it, it, hopefully and uh i don't know if you seen my uh, stream yesterday but hopefully the comp company that you with now they yeah. uh, continue to give you continuing education not just yeah. the education that you learn from the uh uh, uh the school but you know maybe some weekends or some uh, uh most definitely uh, uh, night class and yeah. stuff like that yeah, so and you know, it's a more so intimate company. Um, both my bosses, they both black, so it's black owned. And, um, you know, they kind of small. It's probably eight of us total, so it's kind of a intimate. Um, if I got any problems, you know, I just call a boss. You know, so they 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 definitely got the time. To, you know, yeah. Help so me if I'm bumping. What, what part you know, of the country you bumping, in? Bumping my um head and all that. So. What part of the country you in? I'm in, um, in Atlanta. Atlanta. Well, so so what's your school Atlanta. look like this far yeah. as uh uh how many minority was in your class? It was honestly more minority than uh any other race. Like you know, a lot of Hispanics in, in there. Um, that's good. That's good. So so how many yeah. people in there uh look like they doing it today? Are they really serious about it? I would say the older ones, cause like some of the young, 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 young guys that's like 18, 19, you know, they they they, was they in take it years, in but you know, they in there kind of worried about, you know, looking fresh and you know, trying to be cute and you know, so you know, they was kinda in there playing, but um the older crowd, you know, twenty five and up ish, you know, they was in there really trying to get a job before we graduate, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah definitely yeah, that's what, no that's what's up man i understand bro i because I, 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 I could just imagine me in that class right now yeah yeah i mean i wasn't tripping you know i'm a young mm -hmm. you know so you know but i was trying to get some money i ain't i ain't gonna lie yeah. you know, I ain't to play with it so yeah so you like i say you got your foot in the door now man and just, show, just man yeah so 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 you in here now man i gotta salute you because like like i say man there's been times that i just had to YouTube, you know, that's how I found you because I be YouTube and stuff. So you feel me? Salute you, man. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, no, no, man. Me. Appreciate it, man. That's that's what I do it for, man. Really, really, so, right now, me, me hearing you, man. This, this will get me excited, you know. What so I'll be tapping in, boy. Every time you drop, boy. Yeah, nah, I, but I can just imagine, man. If yeah. I was doing this even when I was 24 years old, man. So the young younger y'all can get into the trade, man. Get into it, man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Sure, 
especially if you already like it, you are if you already liking the money that you're getting, this imagine, man, you're gonna be man. by the time you 30. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you're gonna yeah, be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Appreciate it, bro. I'm gonna go on ahead and get up out. All right, man. Don't be a stranger, right. man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, All right salute. Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. That's what I like to hear right there. Oh, yeah. What is about? All right, we got ace back mechanical in the house. Uh skill trade is the way to go for sure. Let me see. Uh Dante say, I see the dating market uh looking up skill trades. It's job security. Uh Ain't job security in, in white collar. All right. Let me see. Be the change you want to see, especially in this trade. Okay. All right. Uh, Moto Media. Now say HBAC McCann say HBAC is the best uh, trade smoking, respectfully. Let me see. Uh, while there are, their uh, volume is higher, I tried to get a group of uh, US to buy in volume when I was the only one who could get an account. Everyone had money for everything else, but their equipment, sad. I'm trying to see, uh, da, da, da. So, uh, HBAC one, you, you must do, uh, I think you do some, uh, government work. It sounds like that's what she's saying. Not sure. Oh, he say no. Nah. She say I tried a group of us to buy in volume when I was the only one who could get an account. Right. MC, it's thirty days to retake the uh, MD. Uh, took mine a few back in the day, but I passed. So, oh, say so to retake. So you got to wait thirty days if you do fail. Say I took what state in time. I'm sorry, man. Some of these things I uh be, be a little confused. I might not be reading the right though. Him say I took my exact oh seven times. He said he took seven times and passed it, man. That's what's up, man. That's resilience right there. You know what I'm saying? Him say I've never been afraid to fail. To me, failure just means that particular thing didn't work and try some other way. I'm not built uh, to quit. I never have. All right. Let me see. Knowledge is power. Keep learning. Uh, is money in the bank? I think that was mechanical sands. Uh, oh, HVAC, PJ. Let me see. It's real in the trade field, my boy. I've been doing it for five years. This is a blessing for the African American. Let me see. Anyway, I can't get on your live and tell my uh ace back story all right man uh i can leave a link if you want to come on we'll love to hear your story yeah man so uh hey you know uh mm -hmm. i would say man i had the uh, i had the pleasure i had my little cousin working with me man he was what he was like 23 or 24 and uh man uh Back he he back from where I'm from, you know, and they don't have trades back there like that. Uh, back in Shreveport, they do, but it's kind of like it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a family business more type atmosphere because um, it's just, it's hard for it's hard for people like us to get into the trades, you know, in these small rural towns. Oh yeah, for anyway, sure. He was um man when I when I had him my head when I bring him my head working with me, you know, riding in the truck every day, and I'm taking him to. Uh, different people houses and going to these commercial jobs and I'm taking him to uh, we're going to have lunch with some of my friends that got their own businesses one's a plumber you know he's doing like 300 a k a year it's a brother you know and just taking him around and just like people these different people and we talking to laugh and he said man I didn't know this is what he said and I was shocked he said I didn't know that uh that you can make money like this I didn't I had no clue that you can make money like this because he got got caught up in the street life and trying to get fast money, you know, and he was just straight up one day who was out just driving. He said, "Man, I never knew you could make money like this legally. I didn't know you could make this amount of money in one day. I didn't know you could make a thousand dollars in one day, or two thousand in one day. I thought you had to go sell something, you know." 
you know, and one thing, I, you know, so it was kind of like, man, and actually, like, when I, and I hate to say it like this, but I just got to keep it real. When I saw my cousin, I hadn't seen him in a long time. I saw him, I thought he was putting on the act. I thought it was put on the act because what I had saw is not what I saw growing up. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean it was just it was just kind of unbelievable. But anyway, I thought it was acting. But when I start, when we start going to people's houses and we start talking, and I probably would show up to work. I was like, man, like I can't, I can't send you a job by yourself. The way you look, the way you talk, the way you act. You know, you come to work, I can smell, I can smell marijuana. You know, I can smell it. I know how I smell, I can smell your breath. You know, so like, and but realistically, that's what he thought a man was. That's what he thought a man was. That's all he like, see. You know what I'm saying? So I was just sitting there thinking, I said, maybe we need to, and it's just this is a joke. I said, maybe we need to have, you know, we need to have a have on our construction vests, you know, we need to have old jury and a grill. No, no, for so, for so. Hey, look at man. So I understand exactly where you can come from, man, because I come from that background, you know what I'm saying? And and I and I know how I was brought up, you know what I'm saying? Uh that's all I seen. And when I say uh I really did change my life in, until I'm 29, 30 years old. And like I say my mentors didn't come from around the people that I was hanging around with. I get my mentors from books. And uh uh and when, when I say a mentor from a book, I get in that book like they straight up talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Like this is my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Uh so I understand exactly what you're saying. Um so but I think when so when when people uh when our brother see us actually like 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 you uh bring him around that's why i'm saying we need to show them you know what i'm saying they need to see it you know what i'm saying and we can't be uh 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 afraid to let them ride with us so they can see something different you know what i'm saying because i promise you tv media the music is brainwashing us you know what I'm saying? That is 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 actually brainwashing us because, and when I say that, and, and some older people uh, uh, hear me say, or some people hear me say, man, how music can influence uh, somebody for making a bad decision like that? Because our minds really don't develop until we get into our late 20s. We're still a child, man. We're like 24, 25, 26 years old. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, Sometimes it, it takes certain things to the, uh, uh, the, to develop us. You know what I'm saying? We should be, especially our environment. You know what I'm saying? My, my father went in the home. My mom went in the home a lot. Raised around, uh, my grandparents raised me. You know what I'm saying? And when I say some of my grandparents ra uh, raised me, you know what I'm saying? My, uh, one of my gr grandma was working two jobs. You know what I'm saying? She didn't see me. Uh, I'm talking about she, she uh, seven in the morning to three, she gone. Then from three to 11, she gone. I'm at the house by, the, by myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm running the streets by myself. I had to fend for myself. So I, and I know, I know, I know how it is, especially when you don't have like a father figure, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got nobody to take enough for you in these streets. You got to be, be out here in Maine, uh, in these streets at 12, 13, 14 year old sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Or you're going to get picked on and bullied every day. But I know for a fact, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I see the male man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I see the garbage man, but I ain't look at that, look at that like there's no real job. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. I ain't, I ain't see what he was going, going home. I ain't see what, what type of house that he was going for. He probably going for a pay, going to a pay for a house, going to a pay for a car. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so man, I salute you, man, for just even, you know what I'm saying? Taking the time, just show him, show him around because at, uh, at the end of the day, now you, you, you do, somebody did show you, so you, you can't make a decision now, but so, cause sometimes man, we don't have a decision. If that's all, if that's all I see right here, I don't, this is the decision. So I gotta, I gotta know how to move around in this type of environment right here to survive. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all I know of yeah. somebody to take me out. Oh, okay, now. So now, and now, if you still want to go back and live that lifestyle right here, that's on you. You know what I'm saying? That's a choice that you made. But, but at least we give them uh, a decision to make. Show them different things, man, because uh, ain't nobody fit to teach, especially in the United States, man. I'm telling you, I'm talking, man, I'm telling you, I can watch commercials, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about they feminizing all uh, the, uh, the, the whole world, you know what I'm saying? 
whites, black, you know what I'm saying? They they feminizing them too. You know what I'm saying? Uh uh, but as far as our music and stuff like that go, man, they 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 can say uh the N I G G A all day long, you know what I'm saying? I said once before, man, when I wanted to be Tupac, I'm gonna got Tupac results. I ended up in the penitentiary, you know what I'm saying? Thank God I ain't in up here. You know what I'm saying? Uh um, uh, they uh it was a big shootout two weeks after I got locked up, you know what I'm saying? Four of my homeboys that I, I uh that I used to hang out every day we got hit. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm known for sure. I would have been uh been out there trying to, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah, it's up, you know what I'm saying? But it, hey, but the good Lord, hey, he ain't want that for me, you know what I'm saying? He set me down, you feel me? And then he, even even like I say, even behind the walls, uh, I could have made a decision, but I started reading then, you know what I'm saying? And I kind of like uh get got out that environment through books, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, so man, I understand what you're coming from. So I salute, man. But hey, we got uh, Sir Darian, and uh, what's going on with you, bro? Oh, what's up, y'all? Can hear me? Yes, oh, sir, yeah. man. You say you want to tell your story, man? Yeah. How you getting to uh, HVAC? So uh, I went to uh, Lamar University for business management, and my teacher said we need a uh, business to run a business. So um, I went to uh, LIT, like it's like a a community college. And um, I, um, I picked up on it real quick, finished that little program, got a degree, and I worked for an AC company for um, for a year. Then I went and worked for Exxon Mobil doing industrial. And after that, um, after that four years, I got my own license and I started my own company. So, oh wow, man! I salute you, man. That's so, my life. Number. So you, so you, uh, so you work for uh, okay. Congratulations, man! When you got your license. Uh, I got my license uh, October twenty second, two thousand twenty one, and now I got my own company, and I do it like a hundred percent. Okay, man. Salute, man. Congratulations, man. So when you when you work for Exxon, uh, how was that? I liked it. The only what, thing what, I, was that more commercial or industrial? That's 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 solely industrial. Mm -hmm. So that's um that's cooling towers, centrifugal chillers, stuff like that. What what uh, you was in Texas, right? Yeah, I'm in Beaumont, Texas. You, you like was in Beaumont, so uh, it's an Exxon plant in Beaumont. Yeah, it's an Exxon plant in Beaumont. Okay, so so since you started your business, though, so are you are you uh, focused more on like the industrial or residential or commercial? I ain't got enough money for industrial, bro. So I just do uh, residential and commercial. Okay, that's it's that's a, basically it's, what we do. It's a little easier to get into it. Yeah, I gotta say, man. Uh, they probably want you to have so much insurance, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, minimum and everything to get in that industrial. I and think I, I, I was explain y'all got to do so much safety, yeah, and all that to even get started on the job. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, and then they pay uh quarterly, so I know you know quarterly is every three months. I know you was talking about the way people pay, like the net thirty and stuff. Yeah, like so industrial pay every quarter. Yeah, they pay every quarter. So then, like, if you got to change out a chiller or something, you'd be out about 50000 a 100000 for three months. So, yeah, that's something I, I just can't do it right now. I'm only 26, though, so we'll see. Oh, yeah, you good. You good. So you already got your contract license at 26, man. I salute you, man. Yeah, I got it at 26. Oh, sound like soon as you were eligible. Yeah, you went, yeah. You went and got it. That's why yeah. I tell people, yeah, go ahead and get it. But I was watching your videos though, like when you used to work for like Way and all that. And mm -hmm. I just seen you talking about it. And see, after that, the rest was history. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, now I got a partner, Dion. He used to work with me away. He went to Lamar. He used to play football for him. Oh, okay. Y'all probably around the same age. I don't know Dion's oh, yeah. last name. I don't know Dion's last name. But yeah, he he uh he he in he, he in, in industrial right now. Dion probably watching. You know what I'm saying? Dion know I school him and his HVAC too. You know what I'm saying? But uh yeah. industrial, industrial mm -hmm. different ball game, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I, I salute y'all brothers, man, for that industrial. That's a yeah. that's a lot of dirty work too, ain't it? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for what sure. what company you was with? You uh, say Exxon though. Yeah. Yeah, so Exxon, yeah, yeah. I, I know they probably strict on they uh safe. Yeah, we um yeah, it, it, it wasn't too bad. Okay. It was, it was worse than a normal because they like to the lead in uh in the industry when it comes to safety. So yeah, they probably got OSHA and everything walking around there, huh? Sometimes if we get like an audit or something. Mm -hmm. 
something like that. But yeah, we got a lot of a lot of OSHA people walking around. Um, the people that own it too, like the Iranian people. Yeah. Okay, so so how's business? Business good. My first year, I did. Well, I, I have to get with you. Like, I know I don't know how many people are here, so I talk to you like privately if we can. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's doing real good, man. I got like a couple home warranty companies. I got apartment comp, uh, apartment complexes, and I got a property management company. So that's what I aim for, cause they, cause, cause people with no license can't get stuff like that. So I just yeah. weed that out. Like anybody mm -hmm. can go to somebody's house, and everybody got a cousin that work on it. So I try to get where uh, what people can't get that ain't done what we did to get the license. Right, right, right. Yeah, that, that's why I try to tell people. You probably see people asking me all the time, you know what I'm saying? You know, just for the side. But once you get your license, man, it just opens so many doors. You know what I'm saying? Once once you have the right insurance, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, even with your warranty company, you know what I'm saying? You got to have a license to even get exactly. with a warranty company. Exactly. A lot of people be hating on warranty companies that don't even have a license. They just hearing right. about what they boss say. But I right. tell people, man, reason why your boss hating because they probably can't make good money, but a a a a a, a, a man that only got a, you know him himself or a couple employees can make good money. I warranty company. Right, right, right. Yeah, I like if, the, uh huh. I like the home warranty companies that do the uh the net ten days, like the first American and all that. I like those. And I like them like uh like what you were saying earlier when you first start with them you ain't gotta have a lot of money because they about they pay for everything and yep. you just wait till little ten days to get paid for the labor mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it. That's why I say I don't think you're really losing if you labor if they don't pay you. But uh, right. I get this all the time. I never had a, a problem uh getting getting my money from a warranty company. How you ran into anything like that? Nah, I ain't ran across nothing like that. But I ain't, I don't really deal with a lot of them because. I don't want to have too many because mm -hmm. then it just get confusing. So, like, I dealt with a lot of them to see which ones I like, then the yep. ones I don't like. I that's just why I say sign up as many as you can and just weed them yeah. out. Yeah, that I, was the ones that statement. you like to work with. Right. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I go. Um, when I took the test, I, I had to come to Houston to take the test because y'all the only place that got, like, the testing centers that's close to us. We ain't have no testing center in Beaumont. Okay, you probably went on that one on I ten. Yeah, right off the highway, like that little tower. Mm -hmm. That's the tower That's building, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you gotta go upstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that same one. I had to wear a mask and stuff when I took mine. It was like right after COVID, so you know how that was. Yeah, I was, I was pre COVID. Yeah. yeah. So 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 how your test? How how did you prep for your test? Uh, my test. I just bought all the books. And I went took it the first time. I ain't even open the books because I was like, man, I know how to do this, and I failed it like everybody else. And uh, but I got like a so so when, so when you took it that first time though, when you took it that first time, uh, I mean, I, you did fail, but uh, because my man up here trades the cab, he finished here about thirty minutes early. You know what I'm saying? He he was prepared. <laughs> but uh, did you uh, because it took me every bit of uh. The, uh the time that they gave me man i was exhausted man uh how was your time in there did did you did you uh would you in the time for strength no nah, i had like 45 minutes because i was trying to get back home before it get dark that's really what i was doing i kind of figured i was gonna feel it because literally oh. everybody i talked to that uh mm -hmm. that take it say they felt it the first time mm -hmm. but i was more focused on like seeing the way that the, the the questions were structured so when i go back and study yeah. like when i really want to take the test like so oh, that was your game plan yeah yeah it was, yeah, it was, was a game plan get, get familiar structured. with it and, and ain't nothing yeah. wrong with that i think agent was kind of speaking on that too don't get discouraged that you pass uh then pass the first time all you did you you were really just, you, you you was willing to sacrifice how much yeah. it costs you know yeah. what i'm saying to at least get familiar with it you know what i'm saying yeah. that's a good strategy you know what i'm saying so yeah. did you uh how, how does the second time go so the first time I made a 68, second time I made a 79. And that was that's it. All take. Yeah, that's it. That's all all you got to make is a 70. So mm -hmm. when I made the 68, I was kind of hurt, but I wasn't like, Damn. it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's all it takes. So now all you got to do is refreshing it every year. Yeah. yeah. I, just did, I just did my continuous training uh, eight hour, the eight hour class. Mm -hmm. So I just did that online and they just sent my renewal. That was right. what I told you. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but it ain't bad though. It's it's I like it. I like it. It's yeah. it's way more money than working for somebody. It's just the tax part and the Texas controller comp and all that. Like that's my biggest thing right now. That's what I was asking you about yesterday. Oh, so that was you asking about the CPA and the uh, Texas company? That's why I say, no, nah, man, you got to get you a CPA, man, big time. Yeah, man. I got so, one. I got one. Okay, yeah, get you a CPA. And uh, like I say, he can tell you, you know, what to bill out. On most of commercial properties, you got to charge sale tax, you know what I'm saying? 8.25% on residential, you ain't really got to worry about it. Right. But uh, on most of the commercial commercial maintenance and stuff like that, you, you have to, uh, yeah, because they, 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 they don't play, man. You See, our biggest... Our biggest thing was the apartment complexes. They didn't really know if those was like considered commercial or residential, but they considered com uh, residential though. They com okay, uh, yeah, yeah, because that's that's like that's probably like like seventy percent of my business, like the apartment complexes. I got like five of them. Okay, so I just okay, had to make yeah, sure nah. that was right. No, nah, that's good, man. Uh, the man say choice home warrant is horrible. Uh, <laughs> they have jobs though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look! Look at him laughing. Hey, look here. Uh, who got experience with choice? I don't want. I do. You got experience. What's your experience with choice? What he said. <laughs> see, choice? hey, say, see, see, see what, what, why he don't like choice home warranty? It's choice home warranty. Is send out a um, a, um, a work order, but they'll send it to like twenty different contractors and right, right. Who click on and it you first? Can, like nah, I don't like, got, don't yeah, like you, places. I, I always call it like, uh, what the game show is? Like, you gotta hear me on Bush the Yeah, button. yeah, but ain't nobody sitting around waiting. Hey, hey, like that, man. hey, what's the name of that uh that game show, man? You got uh Family Feud or something like yeah. that, man? You gotta hurry up. Hey, with your head behind your back, yeah. But now, nah, man, I would tell you, man, choice will pay. I ain't never had no problems. Uh, get my money on choice. I don't wait around for choice. This is it real slow. And I just so happen to see the email, I go ahead and take it. But choice is horrible as far as the customer service, as far as with the homeowner. Choice is the type of uh uh warranty company that's gonna try to deny everything. You know what I'm saying? So the reason I use choice is I'm already knowing they for the deny. You know what I'm saying? But they, they want first of all, they want pit. I really don't have time for that. Let's just real slow. I ain't got nothing to do. I click on the accept that job order. But they find a little speck of dirt on the unit. They're gonna say, "Oh, they ain't been in that unit maintained." Yeah, so I just, I just double hand. So I know they fit a deny. So that's just my opportunity to go in there and be the first one to get his home on a quote. So I get my little, uh, whatever the deductible is. I think they got low deductible, like seventy five dollars deductible. I get my deductible, so I got paid for my time right there. You know what I'm saying? I, I diagnose the problem, send my pictures in, and as soon as they get denied, hey. Here go your quote right here. You got denied by your warranty company, and then that's how I get customers from uh choice, man. They just pay my pay me directly. You know what I'm saying? I almost get mad when uh choice uh approved it. You know what I'm saying? But there's certain things like that. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to know how to. You know what I'm saying? You got to know how to. You got to know how to uh do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know what I'm saying? Just for a choice paying, they don't want to pay too much. You know what I'm saying? But I never had a uh, choice not pay me, though. You know what I'm saying? They, like I say, they, they always want to negotiate. Oh, man. Uh, they got bad customer service, too. Have any one of y'all talked to one of choice representatives on the phone? Yeah, they, they, they not in like the next right state. Here. You know what I'm saying? They going to call you because uh, you got to submit your what's called. Then they going to call you, man. Uh, they they going to talk to you just like this. What up, man? Uh, man, I see you just put that diagnosis in, then about uh, eight two five seven. Uh, man, why you charge six hundred dollars for the condenser fan motor, man? <laughs> hey, that's them all day. I'm like, man, hold up, slow down. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm gonna be professional with you, man. Please be professional with me. Uh, man, yeah, that's 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 my price. You know what I'm saying? He was like, uh, so one of them told me he was like, man, look here, man, uh. It's five. It's it's four fifty five, man. We get off at five, man. Can you do it for four fifty five? I like, yeah, man. I will go ahead and do it for four hundred fifty five dollars. <laughs> uh, even they'll send me the authorization code. You know what I'm saying? So they real, they they real thugged out of them. Choice I don't want it now. When when you do get, uh contact somebody, and just far as man, they got so many lawsuits though. As far as their customer service, but like I say, they trying to deny every little thing. So, so what's hey, your, so, uh -huh. so what's your favorite one to work with? No, I say I don't want. I don't want to give out my favorite. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to give out my favorite. Like I say, you can uh, you can uh, 
You can holler at me, you know what I'm saying? But I, I always just tell people, man, because my favorite, you know what I'm saying, might not be the same for you. You know what I'm saying? I think right. we kind of we is kind of much in the same region or whatever. Right. So we, I, I'm just, not going to Houston though, so we ain't. We ain't yeah, yeah. No, I ain't talking about. I ain't talking about fucking competitive wise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I, but but I'm just saying, even even in your even if you was in Houston, you know what I'm saying? Let's say if you was in the South, the North, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, you might not get the same calls that I get in my area, or you might get more calls in my area. So it's kind of different. It's hard to say what's best. I know for a fact it's it's some people who get on here uh for choice home warranty and swear about choice home warranty and swear they're the greatest right. uh greatest company that it is you know what right. saying? because they may begin to if they know how to work it just like old boy say um they, they do got a lot of jobs though if you know how to work it you know what i'm saying even if you uh man look here i'm i'm, I'm give you a trick on choice also man choice like i say so i ain't fit to go all out the way for choice home warranty it it has to be in like a, a 10 mile proximity for me to take a choice home warranty call and if you notice uh they probably slow right now but when choice boom when you get them yeah. email, when you get them yeah. emails and they send about 10 or 20 at a time yeah it's crazy it's always at a certain time of day so it might be like six o'clock in the morning you know what yeah. i'm saying at 603 they, they fit send about 15 calls and all, they got an app on their phone. All you got to do is actually go to their website and and uh could because they they're gonna send them in, in order, you know what I'm saying? But you can cut some of them off. You be like, okay, that's my zip code right there. I'm gonna take that one, I'm gonna take that one, I'm gonna take that one. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take whatever zip code that is that's in in your proximity. Go right. ahead and you can go ahead and snatch them. Just go to their website and it, it's gonna be on there on the service call. Go ahead and snatch them up. You know what I'm saying, and run the call. Then you're not really trying to play that, that uh, you know, the family feud game with them. You know what I'm saying? Right. You try to be the first one on there. So it's different ways to do, you know, uh, do different things. You know. Yeah, man. But uh, you know, I, like I say, man, I ain't really got no favorite. I'm, I'm really trying to stey out of the home warranty thing. I'm, I'm aiming more towards commercial anyway. But uh, home warranty's been good for me. Yeah. I think we lost a uh, United Trade man. I want to see his experience. So you you got any more experience as far as home warranty? Uh, uh, do you know the man? Because you you were saying the reason why uh, he don't like it. No, oh, nah, nah, nah. I don't know him. I, I, I okay, okay. Because it looked like he's a uh, Liberty Home Guard. I like Liberty though. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. They pay you. They that's one of the ones that pay with like a debit card. Like as soon as you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I, I'm not even with them. I, I got a couple of companies uh that pay with the credit card. And this is every blue moon, but they'll actually contact me and ask me, do I want to take yeah, this? Yeah, uh, that's how liberty order. is. Yeah, that's how liberty is. Yeah. Yeah, that's how liberty is. So uh, I what I was talking um, I was watching one of your videos. Why you don't like House Call Pro? I love House Call Pro. House Call Pro. Uh like I said, I used to be with House Call Pro. I mean, I did think job job were better. Uh I was explaining like last night. That's why I say I don't have a I got uh when I'm when somebody sponsors some of my channel, I gotta like it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I like Jabber over House Call Pro. So I ain't just trying to uh just say okay, take Jobber just because they sponsor the channel. House Call Pro used to sponsor my channel too. I done gave veto, veto bags, they used to give me veto bags and everything that people had actually want on my channel. Uh, just like I say though, I I um this the reason why I like them though. Like I say, I'm trying to move into more of commercial, uh, mm -hmm. and and then Jobber is a lot better for my commercial job, my commercial clients. I think I did a couple of videos where I can do job forms, uh, you know, and actually schedule out uh, uh and get reminders and and and, and it just, man, it just it just a seamless process with me and and Jobber more. I can if I got a problem, I can actually talk to somebody. With House Call Pro, you know what I'm saying? You can even text them or, or they'll get back with you for an email. But Jobber Man got the best customer so, uh, support it is. You know what I'm saying? And right. they, to me, they got uh, better packages. You know, it just, it just for, for my outfit and really for uh, HBA, HBAC outfit, Jobber is the way to go. See, I got I got with House Call Pro because of you. You 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 was uh when you first started, that's who mm -hmm. you was with. See, my only problem now 
It's if I switch from House Call Pro to Jobber, it's gonna be hard because you got so many customers. You got the warranties for the first year of installs. You got, you got um. Oh no, it's a it's contracts. A, it's a lot. yeah, no, it's a seamless transition. You know what I'm saying? They got this thing called like a, a CSV, where all your customer and you, know, you download it to a, a Excel drive and you move everything over to House Call Pro. House, I mean, I'm sorry to Jobber. Jobber already know the game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so now nah, they they already ready uh ready for that outfit right there. You know what I'm oh, saying? okay. So, I'm yeah, so don't, don't, don't think you'll lose your customers. You know what I'm saying? If you you don't have to type them in one by one or anything like that. It's just a, a click and a drag. You know what I'm saying? Everything gonna come up. Uh, seamless transition. <laughs> and also um, so so uh so let's just say uh like with House Call Pro. When I did switch over. And I had House Call Pro for like a year or so, right? Mm-hmm. So, so some of my invoicing, though, you know what I'm saying, was still on House Call Pro. But just because you uh, in that account, you're still going to have your account in House Call Pro. So if, if uh, any of my customer that I did work for like a year and a half ago, I can still log into my House Call Pro account right now and go get that invoice. Mm-hmm. You know what uh, I'm saying? So let's say if I gave them a one-year warranty or something like that, I can just go look it up. You know what I'm saying? By their uh, last name or something. So I can still actually go into my house call pro account. Oh, I ain't know that. I thought if we mm-hmm. stop paying, they going to erase all that. No, no, no. They ain't going to do that. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And what about the website, though? Like, I, I'm pretty sure your website is uh, when people like um, schedule online, it goes mm-hmm. straight to house call pro platform. So it's uh, just a lot that's linked into house call pro for me to switch yeah that's why i say all, all that this part jobber you know what i'm saying jobber know about all that you know what i'm saying they're gonna uh, show exactly how to do it it's just one M- embedded you know what i'm saying they can book me online as far as my jobber you know what i'm saying house call pro I, I just do the same thing you do they can go to yeah. my website and book online but yeah. jobber has the same thing uh, okay mm-hmm so yeah, man. So even if you want to try, if, even if you want to try, you you know you can try it out. If you don't like it, you can stick with House Call Pro. And I always tell the story. So even um, but what introduced me to a CRM software was through warranty company. That's another benefit to a warranty company. So I used to still do the paper invoices with the carbon copy, right? And and uh, I'm gonna mention this uh, two ten home warranty. I do work for 210 Home Warranty. They uh they got this thing called Dispatch Me. Okay. But it's free. Matter of fact, it was another one. Uh 210 uh, Home Warranty, they doing Dispatch Me. But it was another warranty company that uh, like you say, pay by credit card. And every now and then they'll send me a um a a, a, a a call or whatever. But they introduced me to a CRM software which is called Dispatch Me. So if anybody interested in, in dispatch me also, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they ain't got nothing on Jobber now, but they showed me what a CRM software was, man. Cause even you know with House Call Pro, man, it's just so many benefits. It's not mm-hmm. like it's not like just no regular, you know what I'm saying? You, bro, you can do scheduling, you can do yeah. imports, you can do estimates, you, you you can let the customer know they on the way. It make you, you look know. bigger than you really is. Yes, bro. that's what yes. it do. Man, bro, I'd be going, like I said, I'd be going to some of the people's houses. I, I, I'll tell them I ain't tell you that the other day. You know what I'm saying? She proud of me, you know what I mean? As far mm-hmm. as the business owner, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I look, I look so professional and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, and I don't go in there just like I'm the owner of the business. They right. actually think I'm a technician, man. I be having yeah. people, I be having people when I send an invoice, man, like Java got it, you know what I'm saying? Bam, they put a 20% tip. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, baby, I left you a tip. Some people give me cash tips. You know what I'm saying? Baby, mm-hmm. you take that with you. You know what I'm saying? I believe you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And she just don't know. Hey, the whole uh the whole check going in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's that tip? Yeah. But that's that's what a good CRM software hey uh, uh, do for you, man. Just you know, it help you with every, everything matching on your uh everything matching for your logo, your shirts, yeah. your hats, yeah, your, 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 your uh you know, your van, your outfit or whatever, your truck, everything matching, then your invoice matching. Man, that's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, man, but uh, no, I, I used to, uh, when you're ready, man, use the trial and see if you like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, but uh, even even as far as your, uh, 
your pricing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Some background work that you got to do. Put all your pricing in. But once you got everything in, you set. Yeah. Yeah, a lot going to it when you start your first, like, software. So it'll be hard for you to, like, to change. But i probably do it at the beginning of the year. i try to trial and see how I like it. I ain't going to do it at the end because everything is like it yeah, is. I think, yeah, I think you'll like it, man. It's, it's, it's a nice. It's nice. Let me see if I can get Trace and the cabin back in. Hey, hey, so uh Trace and the Cabin, you were laughing, man, when uh they were talking about choice, man. You got experience with choice? So let's say choice is crook. Hey, Trace and the Cabin, can you hear us? I think his microphone might be muted. He jumping in and out. So hey uh Asian, you haven't uh started with anyone to come again, huh? Well, you know what, man? I just uh, started with uh, Liberty Home Guard. Yeah. Okay. And to be honest, I mean, I, although I've just started with him, I haven't really done any any work for him uh, originally, man. Um, and, and I set up my, my radius to 50 miles, which is ridiculous because, you know, I, I, my, my service fee is like $75, man. It, it just really ain't worth it for me to drive out that far, even for a diagnosis, you know. So I, I, I went back and increased it. And of course, I hadn't I hadn't got any opportunities. So, and again, I'm still you know I'm part time. So yeah, yeah. I mean, if, yeah. if some more come in, that'll be good. If not, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I try to stick my radius a thirty mile radius. Um, okay. Um, I would say, but that that depend on you know what part of the country you're in, what the layout look like. You right. got to think, man, it's six million people, you know, in my surrounding area, so. 25, 30 miles pretty much cover a lot of a lot of properties. You know what I mean? But I can imagine <laughs> somebody staying in like more a rural area or something like that. Right. Uh, even so I stay like on the west uh west part of Houston. My company based out of Katy. So I would uh I'd rather go 30 uh, I'd go 50 miles out west. Cause I ain't going through no traffic, but there's no way I'm finna go to the east side, go through all downtown, go through like I ten. I know I ten. Uh, mm-hmm. just through all that traffic to try to get to some, uh, you know, to some properties. But man, I love like riding to some country areas though. You know what I'm saying? So if it's slow or something like that, I'll do 50 miles. But try to stick to like a 30 mile radius though. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, especially the service fee ain't number 75. Did y'all negotiate that seventy-five dollar service fee? Did y'all negotiate it? Uh, we did. Uh, originally, when I set it up, yeah, I set it up at seventy-five dollars. But you started uh, out at seventy-five. Yeah, yeah. So right now, and, and, that's, that's, that should be more. I, and I know choice uh, do it, like I said, but I use choice just to get in people's houses. But mm-hmm. you know, I mean, to each his own. But I, I started telling all these one to come in there, man, hundred dollars. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but most yeah, I feel like now. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I almost had to increase it because, like I said, most of the jobs they were sending me were were out, you know, 40, 45 miles away, and it just didn't make sense for me to drive out forty five miles, you know, for a seventy five dollar um, service fee. But okay, all right. So, uh, uh, hey, Trey, Trey's Academy, you got any experience yeah. with warranty company? It seemed like you were laughing when he said choice. Give me one second, but you go ahead. Man, uh, man, when I first went into business, I did home warranties and only did it for like maybe like a few months because, um, just wasn't paying enough. And like when they want to do the trip charge and you know, it just, it just wasn't enough. So I don't, I don't do anything with, uh, with the uh, home warranty. I'm not, I don't do anything with home warranty companies. You don't do no home warranty? No, like I said, my first year in business, I did, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just to kind of keep some money coming in, but it wasn't enough for me. See, because the thing about it is like. What, 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 what companies, uh, what companies you with? Ooh. Uh, I have to go back and look. I had to go back and look, man. Um, uh, let me see. It's, so, I know, so you, but you were doing one to come on, on the uh, electrician side? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This was years ago. Okay. I mean, this, this is like maybe like four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, nah, I haven't done no, I haven't done any of them 
Oh no, man, that's that's. Oh yeah, no, that was that was back like four or five years ago. I'm doing. trying to see what what what, what kind of calls would electrician get on the home warranty? Is that far hey, like, uh, like breaker? So the most breaker. breaker outlet not working, or a switch light or a light not working, something like that. Something very simple. Yeah, you know. So what it would cost me to go over there, and then do the charge. I mean, it just it, it wasn't enough, man. You know. Hey, when you say when you say I'm sorry to cut you off, but when you say it ain't enough, does it uh is it like when you when you set up with them, you know the best thing to do well, is uh is okay, time, right. time and material. You so, don't really do the unit price. The unit price will make it feel like it ain't enough, because that's when okay. they try to get you with the flat rate. So no, this is this is where I tried to do that, and they will say, well, you are asking for a lot more than all the other companies mm. so yeah that's what they would say you even even like with some of my uh, like you say you do maintenance with some i i do with some of the maintenance and uh maintenance companies project management companies you know yeah property management property management yeah and uh it's, it's kind of the same but they still pay because like i'm super reliable it ain't no callbacks uh and I do what they actually do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, when they when they, they tell like, me uh I'm charging a lot more than other company, I just tell them go get that other company. Mm -hmm. Nine times ten, it's 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 negotiation time now because a lot of time one of the companies do need to uh honor their contract and serve their customer. You know what I'm saying? They a lot of them don't want to go through the loops of getting another contract out there, you know what I'm saying? When I already collected the deductible. Uh, okay, it's gonna be another two or three days before another contract even take the job. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and sometimes y'all trying to uh save twenty dollars, uh, uh, for that. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times it's, it's, it's just be about negotiation though, because that's their job to try to that's their job to try right. to uh that's what they there for. That's what they uh what they support services there for to try to get that job. The least amount as they can you know what i'm saying that's why i do prefer warranty companies that like i said i got a warranty company that has a minimum uh, of fifteen hundred dollars that i don't even have to call in to uh get an authorization you know i know that is yeah so i got a fifteen hundred dollars uh authorization so i ain't got to call in bam i just bought about bought fifteen hundred dollars all day you know what i'm saying hey you got to take advantage of that you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying hey yeah, if that contact look like it's about to go out, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and change it. You know what I'm saying? Put a new capacitor on there. They hook them up. You know what I'm saying? You got a fifteen hundred dollar limit, and some some of them don't answer no questions. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know about that. Yes, yeah, someone to come don't ask no questions, man. Bam. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You got a fifteen hundred dollar authorization limit. You know what I'm saying? Hey. I, I think a lot of it go off the time too. Like if they give you a call, how fast you do it compared to the, your competitors around you. I think a lot of it is based yeah. off that too. Some of them do that. Some of them, uh, some of them don't have no type of uh, algorithm, uh, whatever you call it. Some of them don't keep up with none of that. Yeah. Um, it's one. I'm gonna I'm get a, a AIG. AIG do a lot of appliances now. They 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 were they were sweet on the HVAC at one time, but they lost one of their biggest uh, contractors. But AIG, like for the appliance repair guys, I'm sure it's some appliance repair uh, listening. They do like the best buys uh i think some home depots the stuff like that but they actually do a, uh what a customer what you call it like a customer service type deal survey or whatever you know what i'm saying but even uh, uh the hvac guy with aig they don't they don't do that for uh for the hvac guys they don't do that for the appliance guys so some of them keep up with that you know what i'm saying um uh, but a lot of companies man they they know man uh hvac companies out here busy too so a lot of them um, if you uh i think you posted uh but you, you ain't got to do no same day turnaround though you ain't got to, you know what i'm saying and, you, and you'll still be busy you know what i'm saying but i always try to man treat my warranty customer just like i'm gonna treat my you know my cod uh so-called customers you know what i'm saying i try to treat them the same way you know what i'm saying if i'm able to get to them uh if i'm able to get to them you know i you know i get to them that same day but i don't just put them off just to put them off you know what i'm saying if that, if that call come in i'll take them 
You know what I'm saying? Cause they, to me, they just important as my uh, regular customer. You know, oh, I know but I know, yeah, a lot of people look at that different. Now I'm gonna take take care of this customer for this customer. Uh, you know, I want to keep a good relationship with the Warren Company also. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just for the uh leave them hanging, you know, like that. You know, but I, I some, some companies may uh so 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 do y'all like I say because some of the Warren companies I'm with, we actually have like a uh a meeting every month. Are y'all signed over one of the companies that do that? So they yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You talking about your representative? Your regional yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we yeah, have yeah. yeah, yeah. So 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 someone to come with the representative to come out and meet you, but but like yeah. I say I'm also uh one to come where we have a big Zoom meeting. It, it'd be about um uh, we uh whatever reason you're in, but it'd be like uh a hundred other uh a hundred other contractors on there. Yeah, we all, you know, what I'm saying if you got any questions, um, but they but they main goal is to uh provide good service. Hey, I, I, I can say this, you know, uh, uh, I kind of been phasing out some of the work I used to do because, man, uh, being a one, two, three man uh operation, I would find myself getting burnt out because, um. Uh, I've been doing so many calls a week, you know, and I'm constantly in my van, like, all the time, you know, and I'm constantly answering the call all the time. So, um, Say that again. I'm sorry. Say that again. No, I said some of the work I'm trying to phase out that I do um, because, like, over this summer and even last summer, man, like, my phone was just constantly ringing, ringing, ringing. Then I was always in my van all the time. So, I did a few. I did a, a few commercial projects this year, like I did a, um, a lighting remodel project at a. So, so not to cut y'all real quick, but even yeah. with that, uh, what's up? Uh, you know, a virtual assistant. Have you looking, looking to that so, to answer your phone? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, my, I have my mom. She she answers. She answers my stuff now. Okay, she answers. Okay, once yeah, you start does. that. Yeah, she does now. But, but, but even so, um, I really want to. Well, I don't want to say I want to slow down, but really so. Okay. I'm, I'm really I'm trying to transition to do less residential because it it causes me to be on call and it causes me to constantly be putting out fires. You know, mm -hmm. so, like we did a I did a project over the year. I mean, I did a project in the summer where we did a uh, it was a school remodel where we had to uh, go in and do uh, take out all the old light fixtures and put all new LED fixtures in. And so I was at the project for like a month and I, I got spoiled because I made a lot of money, but I wasn't just crisscrossing, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't yeah. crisscrossing going, you know, from this highway to this highway, from this person's house to this person's house, you know, diagnosing this, diagnosing that, you know? So um, I still want to do like my service calls, but. Um, yeah, but, but no, nah, man, that's a good thing about, you know, being a business owner. You get to find out what you like and what you don't like, you know what I'm saying, or what you don't like to do. I mean, uh, I mean, it, it was, I mean, I mean and it's kind of like, I, I, I don't know if I see, because like when I first started, like I didn't mind doing the bit, I didn't mind doing it that way because I was, I was trying to put my bills and get everything, you know. Right. So, you're hustling, uh, you're grinding, you, you're yeah. taking, you're taking whatever. So, you ain't, yeah, you ain't turning down nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I know how it is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But then when you get to a certain point, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Or or, or even if, if you think about hiring somebody, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and you might want to get them to do it for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and you pay them a wage. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. If you don't, if you, if you just don't want to turn it down, yeah. you know. Okay. But like I say, uh, what, what, what about you, uh, uh, Darren? You uh, you answer your own phone? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I know he said he get burnt out, but I don't get burnt out. Yeah, yeah I just go. I would say yeah, yeah. So you, you just start, you just start. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. Or like I say, yeah. if you get to a point in time, man, where you don't want to do certain things, you running, you running, doing it, running, doing this, and 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 then as you start growing and you uh, finding better opportunities. Where it's taking you less time and, and uh, less, uh, but you're getting paid more money to do a certain thing. You ain't gonna want to be, you know, what I'm saying, uh, you know, doing a good job that it taking you long longer to do and, and making less money. But I can say this though, like um, with with some of the jobs that I just don't want to do, I 1099 those. 
Mm-hmm. I got something okay. to attract them out quick. Yeah. So, I mean, you ain't going to make as much money, but right, right. If take $1,500 yeah. and they ain't never got to show up but to do the startup on it. Then uh, Right. Do that that's the same thing I was telling him. Yeah, if you don't want to do it, yeah, uh, just give it. Just give it to somebody and you just yeah. get a percentage of it. Even if you get a small percentage of it. Yeah. At least you're still getting some. So yeah, 1099. That's like my best friend at some time. Yeah. So so even like I say, even with Jobber, I'm sure how's called pro pro do this, man. But like I say, even with Jobber, man, you can uh it's like it's like even all over the city. You know what I'm saying? Man, you can just you could just send uh them a jobber platform. Let's say your uh your subcontractors, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they gonna get an alert. It's almost like uh like choice home warranty doing it, but you acting like choice home warrant warranty. You know what I'm saying? So if it's a certain job you don't want, you know what I'm saying? You just put them users in there, and bam, I'm gonna send it to Darren. Okay, I, I, I ain't got time to do this job right here, so I'm gonna send this to Agent. You know what I'm saying? He gonna get he, he gonna get the address. He gonna know what time he need to be there, or what time he can be there, or give him like a uh you know same thing you do with a customer give him give him a window that, that he needs to be there hey man see or, or send it to all of them i'm gonna I'm send one to united tradesmen i'm gonna send one to Darren, and i'm gonna send that same call to adrian whichever one of y'all take it y'all can take it you know what i'm saying if if, if i ain't got enough subs uh to take care of that job at that time deny you know what i'm saying or, or you or you know or you can't get to it you know what i'm saying but we do need to scale that though. I don't think we need to be just be turning down no uh, money. But that's another thing too, man. You don't want to grow too quickly either. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell some people, man, take your time. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't bite off more than you can chew. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're doing business, a good business, and word of mouth, your company gonna grow. You know what I mean? But I say you don't want it to grow too fast. Or I'll grow you though. I can, I can I can say this right here, man. You know, like um, so. I say that like uh, I get burned out. I got three children, so my son he do soccer on the weekends. I be I be want to go to his game. Amy have mm-hmm. practice twice a week. My daughter she does violin. I got to take her to practice one day a week, and I got a newborn. You know, so when I so that's where I'm coming from when I say that. Yeah, you want to you want to build your business model around you and what you exactly. love to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh-huh. yeah. I somebody mean, said that earlier, like a uh, work life balance. You know what I'm saying? Got to balance that thing out. And I, I can't say this like right now where I'm in. This is the happiest I've been in. Like as far as like, I, I, I probably say my entire my entire career. You know what I'm saying? This felt like the happiest that I've that I've actually been. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Man, if anybody got anything else, man, I'm, I'm gonna go and shut it down, man. Give me some grub on, man. I enjoy it, y'all, man. Everybody, uh, standard store, uh, uh, Asian, uh, uh, Darian, United Trades, man. I enjoy it all, y'all, man. So, uh, we need to do this again, though, man. Uh, looks like I didn't pause, but uh, yeah, yeah, I say, man, we need to do this again, man, and uh. Y'all can plan something out. Uh, I come up with a topic sometime this week, next week. You know how I do it. I'll pop up on here, man. And uh, we, we have a good time try to add value to the community. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. hey, you, you got an email? Yeah. I, uh, let me leave it in the comment. Okay. Yeah, just uh, reach out to me, man. Close by, too, man. We need to link up. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, man, y'all, y'all need to set up something, man, on the weekend sometime. Well, I mean, everybody's busy on the weekend, but but during the slow season, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, have a day where, you know, even people from out of state, like I'm in South Carolina, but shoot, I come down for a day on the weekend, you know what I mean? And like link up with, uh, you know, like-minded individuals to see what I could do to, you know, increase my sales and, you know, to, right. you know what I mean? Whatever I, information I have, I could help people with, whatever. Air purification kits. Okay. Okay. Air purification. Yeah. Like like you're talking about the, the UV lights, the black lights. Yeah, like a Remy Halo light, an air night. Yeah. I like the air scrubber. I was promoting that air scrubber. I do the okay. Remy Halo lights. Remy Halo. Yeah. yeah. I had a neighbor That's came up to me the other day. I think they, what they got a new Remy Halo he was asking me about. Mm-hmm. 
Man, they got a remake. Halo Two now. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's the LED light. Okay. So. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much air quality though. Uh, mm-hmm. Right. I know you know about flow switches. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. secondary and primary safety switches. Mm-hmm. And the Nest thermostat. Everybody wants them Nest thermostats now. So. Yeah, man, homeowners love them Nest thermostat. A lot of technicians be hating on the Nest, but now nah, Nest the way to go. Yeah, that's the only one I stop. The Nest. I, yeah, I'm a Nest. Are you a Nest dealer? Yep. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm a Nest dealer too, man. Sometimes they be getting uh, good discounts uh, yep. with that Nest. I, I, I bought probably about four of them at uh, about two hundred dollars a piece. I think uh, one seventy five a piece. Hey, you get your name and, and boarded on it. Um, now so. Uh, when I go to the, uh, I just put my name in the what you call, um, you know, when you go to Pro ID or whatever, when you yeah. go through the Nest, yeah, I got a dealer ID, a six digit code. Once I put that six digit code in, all my company information come up. So even if they have anything, a type of alarm, or 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 they get like a maintenance code with their Nest, my information gonna uh, pop up. So also Nest got a program. And I hate, I hate it, man. But they used to when when it first happened, man, I was getting a lot of customers through Nest. But they had this uh, uh app called Handy app, and Handy all over Houston, man. Handy will send me calls uh, uh, if they get a if somebody get an alert or they need maintenance or they got some some type of alarm and they uh and they code Handy got this app. I get alert on my phone and they'll tell me, hey, can you be here at such and such time? Almost like a home warranty. But uh, this year, Angie List bought them out, man. I, and I hate Angie List. I'm like, man. But yeah, since that, Angie List too. bought them out, I think I got one call where they tried to send me to the east side of Houston, and I, ain't, I just didn't accept it. But, I, think, uh, I think every new business get um Yeah, they bought all the, all the good software. Over. Yeah, all the yeah. software companies, man. And they probably, hey, Angie, Angie Liz probably dropped them a check, probably about $300 million or something. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. They're trying to monopolize that thing. So if any of y'all, if any of y'all got a good software idea out like here, trust me. And, 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 and it's uh, making moves or something. If it start making moves, one of them big companies going to come and, uh, and buy you out. Even with uh, talking about Choice Home Warranty. When I was talking about AIG, Choice Home Warranty, the one that uh bought the AIG uh uh customer out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they went down here from there. I forgot the name of the company, man, but they were sweet, man. I'm talking about they were sweet, but then Choice ended up buying them out, and then you know it was down <laughs> here from now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. If y'all ain't got anything else, man, I I catch up with y'all next time. I enjoy y'all though. I'm gonna email you. All right, for sure. You, you see right. it. Uh, not check. You should see it. Uh, it's right there. I can show it. They're gonna email right there. Uh, Washington Cool and seven one three at gmail dot com. That's that's my YouTube email. Okay, I'm of course my business mail, but that's for uh my business email. If any residential or commercial property owner out there, it is info at Washington AC and Heating dot com. But that's strictly uh uh for business purposes only. All right. All right, man. Y'all peace, man. I got my boy uh Astro, but man. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, man. Y'all take care. All right, Agent. All right, well, man. All right.